Welcome everybody to the lock-in. It's Friday night. I'm Barry Chandler. You're all very welcome. We're going to settle in for an evening of a few stories, a few sips, great guests, great whiskies. Delighted you could join me again. Uh, looking forward to sipping a few whiskies with you. It's going to be a, a packed evening, three whiskies, three different whiskies that uh, have never been featured, have they, on the lock-in before? No, they haven't. Uh, three new whiskies to the lock-in, two great guests to have some crack with over the course of the evening. So let me know where you are, what you're drinking. Um, let me see. Chris is joining us from Michigan. Good man, Chris. We've got Martin in uh, Ripon, California, just up the coast from me. Holly is joining us from Kansas City. Hi, Holly. John or Sullivan is in Yakima, Washington. Great stuff. Love to know what's in your glass. Let me know what you're drinking. Um, before we bring in our first of our guests this evening, uh, let me talk a little bit about what we're going to do tonight. We're going to sample and sip on three whiskies. We're going to talk about their stories. We're going to talk about those whiskies, knows them, taste them. We've got two fantastic guests who are going to join us. The three whiskies we'll be tasting tonight. The first will be McConnell's Irish Whiskey, and we'll be joined in a few minutes by McConnell's Irish Whiskey brand ambassador, Sarah Kennedy, who's going to lead us through some of the stories behind this uh, revived brand and a little tasting of it too. Uh, we are also going to sample and taste a very unusual whiskey, one that I happened upon this week, and I thought we'd bring it on the lock-in and talk about it, and that is this 15-year-old single malt uh, from Trader Joe's. And for those of you who are not from the United States, Trader Joe's is a uh, grocery chain, very quirky, um, really kind of a lot of organic food, uh, real, mostly own brand products, everything in there is own brand uh, and they have a fantastic 15-year-old single malt, which I picked up for $40. So we're going to talk about that a little bit and sip on it. And we are also going to sample and taste uh, Redbreast's newest whiskey, Redbreast Small Batch Cask Strength, which is a US-only release. We had a, a live tasting with Dave McCabe, the blender from Middleton, last week, last Wednesday, online, which replaced our lock-in. So we're going to taste those three whiskeys tonight. Before we bring in our first guest this evening, uh, I want to draw attention to another Irish whiskey brand that's making the news this week, and that is Waterford uh, Whiskey and Waterford Distillery. So this week, Waterford released the results of a years-long study, a peer-reviewed study, a scientific paper to uh, that was uh, that has documented the effects that terroir or the climate and soil and gradient and weather and the, the general environmental conditions have on barley and consequently have on whiskey. And the paper uh, released this week uh, proved beyond doubt really uh, and, and fairly consequentially that terroir, uh, that flavor that, that flavor that comes from a specific place is present in whiskey even after distillation, after fermentation. And uh, that is a remarkable thing for the world of whiskey because terroir is something that uh, the wine world knows exists like two vineyards next to each other uh, even with the same soil types will have dra dramatically different wines and it's something that's been disputed and debated in the world of whiskey for a long time and this paper uh, is very important because Waterford Distillery has pretty much built their entire operation around uh, terroir and transparency and traceability. And a few months ago, the team at Waterford reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in uh, 
perhaps hosting a podcast series that would dive into this uh, this study that they were doing, but also terroir itself and their approach to terroir. And, and we talked about it for quite a while before we eventually decided to do something together. And what we decided to do was uh, an eight-part podcast series called uh, Terroir Driven. And it is a Waterford Whiskey podcast that, that I'm hosting. And the goal of the podcast is to give you the whiskey drinker and the uh, whiskey enthusiast enough information to make your own mind up as to whether terroir is something that's important to you and to, as to whether Waterford's process and approach is something that matters to you. So I've spent the last few months interviewing scientists, distillers, brewers, farmers, um, whiskey drinkers, and I've created a documentary style podcast and the first episode drops on Tuesday. And uh, I'll be sharing links to that. And it's called the Ter- it's called uh, Terroir Driven, the Waterford Whiskey Podcast. And what I want to uh, stress is that I produce this podcast with full editorial control. And the team at Waterford, in fact, uh, haven't had any say in what was aired and what was put into each episode. Because what I wanted to do was I wanted to get an objective oversight or kind of overview and input and perspective from others outside the distillery as well as those inside the distillery. So I think it makes for a really interesting podcast. It's called Terroir Driven. It's on Spotify and iTunes. You can subscribe right now. The teaser episode is already out. It'll be live on Waterford Distillery's website next week. And I'll share links to it across my social channels as well. But uh, I'm really excited about it. It's been a huge project. We're not finished it yet. We have about six or seven of the episodes produced, the final one or two still to be finalized but uh, really excited about it and the last episodes of course deal with the the study itself so it's something i'm looking forward to sharing with all of you what else do i need to uh let me see let me have a look at the the comments there do 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 ireland leading the way yeah it's really excited uh, it's really it's a really exciting thing all right full house tonight lots of people in the house Paul says, you'll probably see many distilleries change their processes. What I think is important about this uh, approach, from my perspective anyway, is that it gives you options as a consumer. It gives us whiskey drinkers options. uh, And not everybody needs to appreciate the approach, nor should they. And not every whiskey should be for everybody because we can't keep up with everything. And we mightn't agree with all the approaches that all distilleries and brands pursue. But this to me is interesting. Uh, and I stand behind um, the podcast and their approach because I said it about a year and a half ago that it was Ireland's most exciting new distillery. I maintain still today that it is. And I'm looking forward to seeing where their whiskey goes over the next few years. So you will be hearing a lot about Waterford from me. Let me tell you a lot about Waterford uh, over the next few weeks uh, and for good reason. All right. So with that in mind, I think we should probably crack in to uh, our first whiskey and our first guest of the evening. And I'm delighted to have this whiskey featured for the first time and for the first time to be joined by Sarah Kennedy, who is McConnell, I, McConnell's Irish Whiskey brand ambassador. Sarah, you're very welcome to the lock-in. Um, I'm really glad to be here, Barry. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Thanks for joining. So. <laughs> I've seen you lurking in the background all the time for these <laughs> lock-ins, putting in your comments in there. You've been a good supporter over the last over the last year, haven't you? Exactly, yeah, but I, I never actually make it to the end of the show, so this, this might be a first, you know, <laughs> staying up late. That sounds like a challenge there now to see if you can make it all the way to the end of these uh, nine-hour adventures uh, that we embark on on a Friday night. Uh, Sarah, you you represent McConnell's Irish Whiskey. Um, Before we get into the whiskey, uh, I'd love to know a little bit about your own background and then how you got into uh, working in the whiskey industry and and how the last year has been going for you. Um, Well, it's it's a funny story because... um, I previously didn't work in, in the spirits industry. Um, I, I was a bartender when I was a student and I was always interested in spirits, but um, it wasn't until this year, actually, that I started working in the industry. Um, before that, I you know I lived in Belfast, grew up in Belfast, um, went to university here and just always was in love with the city. Um, and I think, I did a business degree and, you know, focused on marketing and was always wanting to work in sort of a marketing type role. And I, I loved um, that side of business. Uh, so I moved in after a graduate program, I moved into the insurance world, which pretty heavy corporate, very different from what I do now, <laughs> as you can imagine. But um, 
Northern Ireland, being, being as it is, is it, you work in an SME industry and you, you sort of dabble in, in every type of industry. So whenever I was working in, in, in corporate insurance, I came across distilleries and breweries. Um, and from there, I attended a few events. Like I was at Whiskey Live last year. Um, I attended the the McConnell's Bar Crawl. Um, whenever I was there last year at the launch, I just ran into a few people and just showed my enthusiasm for the industry and yeah so from then on a um, few months later was contacted uh, by the guys who were involved in the project and just they sort of had some casual conversations with me and to see how interested I was and yeah really just got obsessed with it after that and just had had to take the opportunity so here I am and uh, for the are. past seven months I've just just loved just enjoyed every single minute of it so I came across your your social media channels. I think right out of the gate, you set up your your social media channels to be all about uh, McConnell's Irish whiskey. And what was immediately apparent was your enthusiasm and your eagerness and your pride for not just the whiskey, but for Belfast. And it shines through. And I was dying to have you on the show because not only do we have new distilleries and new brands emerging on the scene, we've got new entrants to the world of whiskey. And what a joy it is to see the industry through your eyes and others who are joining now with such eagerness and enthusiasm and just such a, a vim for for whiskey it's really infectious in a good way <laughs> it's really good to hear that though because sometimes when you're when you're coming on board and i have to be honest during maybe lockdown one before i did work for mcconnell's i did listen to your podcasts and so whenever I was asked to come on the show, I was like really excited, which it's, it's kind of real nerdy of me just to be so excited about it. But I, I really am really enthusiastic about the industry. And even from when I started, you can see new releases. And especially whenever you come up north um, and you see like County Down, the distilleries that are popping up in, in County Down is incredible. So uh, with Belfast and, and uh, McConnell's being a Belfast brand, and obviously with our plans, in the future to, to have a distillery here it's just it, it's incredible it's just i'm just really excited to be a part a part of the project so how aware would you have been of belfast's role in the whiskey world growing up or of whiskey at all growing up in belfast um so i wasn't i wasn't aware of belfast I, i'm not i'm not gonna lie i wasn't i wasn't aware of belfast history in irish whiskey i knew about irish whiskies and sort of um whenever I was working in bars and also my, my father was was a whiskey drinker and um, so Irish whiskey I always knew about Irish whiskey I always knew about some of the brands like Pyres and Green Spot and you know I, I and uh, Bushmills obviously up, up here in Northern Ireland um, is, a, is a great tourist attraction and, and always has been from from as long as I can remember up the Antrim coast but I didn't know how ingrained Belfast City itself was in in Irish whiskey, so it, it's it's interesting because Belfast city itself is an industrial city, and you know it's known for being industrial and for being ahead of its time. Um, and then, unfortunately, uh, this the city went through a period of conflict, and now uh, there's peace, and you and we want to move forward and get back to that you know, industrial city that we what, that we were. I mean, I was born in 1991, and all I know is that the city is. Uh, prosperous and you want to live here and it's growing and it's it's constantly growing so um it's exciting that to bring Irish whiskey back to, to Belfast uh because since I've been in this role and looking back there it's actually ingrained in the city and if you walk around Belfast city you'll actually see it on the walls of Belfast and if you go to the, the cathedral quarter um I mean you have like fish mills warehouses you also have uh, in Dunbar Street, just round the corner from where the friend at hand there is in, in Cathedral Quarter, is where JJ McConnell's warehouse was and where there was a, a massive fire. So it's just, there's a, there's so many elements of, of Belfast that I can't wait really for lockdown to be over and maybe do some kind of, you know, tour around Belfast and show all, all the spots where, where McConnell's was. We'll get a few hundred Americans over to join you on the, the walking <laughs> tour of Belfast. With sixteen exactly. stops along the way, <laughs> exactly. all the bars on the way. It's amazing, isn't it, to walk around cities like Belfast, Cork, Dublin, and it's not until somebody points something out to you that you'd realise 
what that thing was before or what that building housed before uh, or yeah. what it was used for. But that history, that whiskey history is, like you mentioned, an industrial city like Belfast, it's everywhere. Yeah. Well, if, yeah. even if, um, I don't know if the last time you were here, Barry, that you went into the friend at hand in Belfast. It's, never, it's, it's, never. You've never been? Week. No. It is incredible. You know, if you go in there, uh, everyone's so friendly. Even, I have to say, I, I didn't know many of the guys in there personally whenever I started my job, but they very quickly made me feel like as if they'd known me for years. So that's great. And they're, they're a massive support. So when you go in there, um, there's, every Irish whiskey that you could think of. Obviously, I actually asked them about, about the releases that you had, and of course, they don't have those US releases, but <laughs> they have most of most of the Irish whiskeys that, that you, you could think of. But they also have a lot of the, the memorabilia, so lo like loads of old decanters, and they actually have one of the original uh, Jen J. McConnell's bottles, and it's unopened. Uh, and that's just incredible um, to see wow. whenever you walk in. So, the um, you joined the company in the middle of the pandemic. So, did you? If you mentioned seven months, are you seven months yeah. with the company, or did you join? You, you are seven months. Okay, so you joined a, a, a pandemic stage whiskey company. So you've not yet <laughs> had the chance to really explore accounts and be on the ground as much as you probably want to be, right? No, well. I mean, I spent a lot of time maybe between sort of end of August, September, where it was a little like you could move around a lot more more than you can now. And even then you thought you were restricted back then. But today you're just so massively restricted. But even in that short space of time, everyone that I spoke to, um, I don't know whether it was because I was really enthusiastic about it, but everyone you spoke to wanted to hear you out and wanted to speak to you about it um and i was i was worried that i was going to get you know some resistance because of uh, not taking on new brands and and people struggling because people really are struggling and people really wanted to hear you out especially independent uh off sales and independent on trade bars they they genuinely wanted to hear you out and i was really grateful for that so and I learned a lot during those maybe three months where I was able to get out and about. Um, but also, I'm really so thankful for the fact that you have social media and things like this because <laughs> I probably would have gotten nowhere if that if, I if they didn't exist. So, tell us. Uh, there's there's so much history to the brand. I want to dive into that in a little bit. But I'm aware that everyone who's watching is sitting with a glass in their hand and they're drinking something. <laughs> And the two of us are just nattering away and not a drop in the glasses in front of us. Should we pour a drop of McConnell's and maybe you could walk us through it and talk us through what we have here? Yes, of course. So, can I talk a bit about the bottle, Barry? Yeah. Just as you're pouring it as well. I'll hold it up because, here and show people the bottle. Um, Keep a good view. I don't know whenever we first got it that and I know it looks really well in a picture, but when you, you actually feel it, I just I, I love it. You know, the weight in the bottle. Heavy, so heavy, yeah. <laughs> it it's is a heavy. Yeah. yeah, it's almost whenever you get a bottle kill, you don't really want to throw it out because it's just it just <laughs> looks <laughs> it's beautiful, um, yeah. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of history on the bottle itself. Um I mean if you go on my Instagram, you'll see one of the original bottles which is in uh the friend at hand. And you'll see what it what it actually looked like at the time, um, and so a lot of the elements of the bottle still hold the original look of the bottle, which is the color um, and the Harper Varen here, and you know the font of the McConnells. Um, but there's a, there's also new elements of the bottle, which is the shape of the bottle, and so the shape of the bottle is you know it has a little indent here, uh, and there's actually a story about why it's shaped like that. So. If you look down here um, at the bottom on the, you know, the white strip uh, on the label. Yep. And it says restoring the legend on it. Uh, on the old bottle, on the previous bottle, there used to be um, little extracts of analysis down here. And it's where uh, historic figures would have recommended the bottle. And one of them was actually a medical doctor was recommended McConnell's as, as a whiskey to drink. So, um, just find that fascinating and obviously you know with the way things are now you can't you can't really have medical doctors recommending 
an Irish <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. But, you know, it's very Irish of them, isn't it? Um, it is, yeah. But, but the bottle itself is shaped um, like a like a pill capsule. Um, so if you see, it's shaped like that specifically because it used to be recommended by a medical doctor. So ah. um, just one little story. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, it is a, a very impressive bottle for a whiskey at this price point and at this age that you've got this wonderful what's like a decanter and like you said you wouldn't want to throw it away and and, and like the harp of air and even even on the the top of the cork there yeah. you'll see let's see if i can show you that upside down there there's the harp in there as well lots of detail yeah um and we'll talk about some of the history of because of it in a second because i know the year of its founding is also a pretty important year in the united states um but I've given myself a fairly generous pour here, a bit of a heavy hand. Um, Me too. <laughs> Sarah, talk, talk us through what we have here. Okay, so McConnell's is a, is a five-year-old blend, um, and it's a grain and malt blend. Um, and it's, you know, whenever you, you first expect, whenever you first see the bottle and you, you as you said yourself, um, there's a lot of, um, work goes into the bottle and a lot of passion that goes into the bottle um, but a five-year-old whiskey and a five-year-old blend that's that's our product that's our staple product so we really wanted um, it to be perfect we wanted the, the our staple product to be perfect so there's no point in sort of cutting corners whenever you're releasing your very first whiskey um, but whenever you uh, pour the whiskey and you nose it for the first time um, you do get as with a lot of uh, bourbon uh, finishes. You do get like vanilla. You get a honey note, um, but if you, if you nose it again, so that you do get a spice on it. Some apples, even some pears on yeah. the nose as well. Yeah, a bit of a bit of green apple. A lot of people tell me green apple. It's not something that I personally know. First, and I get it on a lot of, of Irish whiskies is you get that green apple note, which uh, I've been told is to do with, with the yeast that's used whenever. Yep. Um, so I don't get as much of, of, a, of a green apple, but I get a citrus note and a vanilla, honey, uh, a little bit of pepper, a bit of white pepper. Yep. It's very, so, um, it's very delicate. It's, it's not... It's got a nice, nice little kind of soft spice balance, a little bit of vanilla. Yeah. Yeah, that's citrus, and I'm, I'm getting pear and apple coming through to me. Yeah. Well, that's one thing that you, what that I've learned over the past um, sort of seven months or so is that everyone gets something completely different. You know, I've heard know. people. Uh, sometimes as well, people need a bit of a nudge is what they're drinking, and then they get it straight away because it is difficult. It's not easy to, to, to get those notes. And if people say they just get whiskey, they're also correct, aren't they? <laughs> or fire. I get that a lot. <laughs> fire. Have you have you a Belfast toast that you would give now if you were cheersing somebody with a whiskey? If I was cheers, I'd just say Sancha or cheers. Cheers is very Belfast. I think, you know, you just is go it? cheers. Yeah. <laughs> get say it cheers, you. <laughs> cheers. Get, get it into you. <laughs> get it into you. So what I get whenever on on my on my palate is a is a butterscotch. You know, a lot of people have said honeycomb to me or got like yellow man as a as a note, but I get butterscotch. You know, it, it really provokes some memories of um, Werther's original. <laughs> as you get it, get it. Yep. I don't know whether everyone's going to know what a Werther's original is with you, Barry. It's a, a, a sweet, a hard sweet for old men and women, for grandmothers and grand and grandfathers tucked away in their in their cardigan pocket for when you visit. <laughs> That's it. But it is tasty, you know. You can't beat it. Whether it's original. Um, Do you ever get the chewy ones? Do you ever have the chewy word as originals? Yeah. So I had them in my car one time, <laughs> and I will never have them in my car again because all I did was eat them. I was like driving down the road, and it is one after another. <laughs> it's like no more. Not doing it again. <laughs> They're very good, yeah. Yeah. So um, very peppery, isn't it? Yeah, 
it's the pe it's the it's the after something that you don't expect with um a blended whiskey and and a whiskey that is quite quite young a five-year-old whiskey is is great it's a bit extra it's not a three-year-old it's got an age statement for a blend but you're not expecting that linger and it is a peppery linger but for for people yeah. who are being introduced to, to irish whiskey um you know the, it's very mellow so whenever you first have it on your palate it is very mellow and um it's not too much not too heavily complex but it also has that wee bit extra, especially for a blended Irish whiskey. So, I mean, a lot of the people that I have um, introduced to McConnell's haven't traditionally been a neat whiskey drinker. And mm -hmm. just talking them through it and uh, telling them how, how to drink Irish whiskey, I find that I've got uh, so much positive feedback from it. Um, so that, that sort of lingering note at the end where you get that white pepper but to me, the finish on it is everything because it makes you go back for another sip. I wonder, is that coming, more educated palates than me will know better, but I wonder, is that pepper coming from the grain component? Um, I get this I get this maltiness, kind of a biscuitiness, uh, fighting the, the pepper at the end. There's like a dry length to it. It's got like a sweet, mm -hmm. sweet on the front and then pepper that goes on and on and on and kind of a dry pepper. I wonder what that is uh where that originates you know i will throw it out there because i i i don't know there, that yeah. the answer to that question but um i know what you mean it, it, it there is a biscuity multi biscuit to yeah. it and then and then there's a savory note to it with the white with the white pepper it's not yeah it's not black pepper it is a white pepper it's, it's a more dry pepper. yeah yeah it is yeah i always think of like whiskeys on this pepper scale from white pepper to like a, a habanero pepper, you know, and where where is it in terms of that spice? And this is definitely on the white pepper side. Yeah, and it does change, you know, as you, on your whiskey journey because uh, the more I've been I've been tasting whiskeys, obviously I know McConnell's. I could pick it out of a whole row of whiskeys, but yeah, and um, even with drinking peated whiskeys and 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 trying other whiskeys, different finishes, it it you do start to be able to find other other notes in the whiskey that you couldn't have found before. So. Yeah, it's um, it's not got that distillate forward kind of alcohol forwardness that you might find in a young whiskey. There is that very unusual length of pepper to it, which is uh, yeah, it is very unusual. I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, it's Great. got an incredible length to it. Yeah, the um, in seventeen seventy six, our American friends will be very familiar with that date when they finally shook off the shackles. Uh, the 13 colonies shook off the shackles of their, their British overlord, but 1776 was an important time in McConnell's too, wasn't it? It was. So um, if you look at a lot of the old posters and you, you'll find them around and um, if you could, especially if you come here to Belfast, all the mirrors and all the memorabilia they established 1776. And that's because the McConnell's family established the, um, the McConnell's brand in, in 1776. And, uh, you know that that's a long, long time ago, but they did they did um, trade right up until the nineteen thirties, which is incredible. Mm. It's an incredible amount of time that they traded for, um, and they were they were massive in in America and and here and like a lot of Irish whiskies um, at the time. Irish whiskey was was huge, like a lot bigger than it is now, and, and we're we're starting to come back come back to that again. Um, and uh, and the more the more I, I delve into it, the more I listen to other people in the industry, you learn more about what the actual truths are about Irish whiskey. Um, I know you had done a sort of a, a myth buster there not too long ago, which is great. I do love a myth buster. Um, so with, with Irish whiskey, I love the mystery that's involved in the brands because you can't be 100% sure about anything, about mash bills, about... A, about anything really because it, it was so long ago and the way the records were kept then. So I love really delving into the history of, of the McConnell's brand. But it did go on a, on a journey and it had its hardships just just like like every company really. Um, and it was a, there was a wee bit more to it because back in um, 1907 and 1909, 
Um, McConnell's had two large fires. Actually, the one in, in, in 1909 had uh, whereas half a million gallons of, of whiskey were actually completely destroyed in a fire in uh, on Dunbar Street, which, as I was saying, is j literally just around the corner in the Cathedral Quarter in, in Belfast. And, and now it's just a big car park that you, you'd park on. And it is sad that, you know, a company would, would suffer such a massive loss, but did start to rebuild. And um, throughout those years, you know, you've got until 1930, whenever they really started to struggle and, and started to go into receivership. But if you think of those years in the 1900s and how hard they were for everyone with prohibition and wars and, you know, they really battle for a lot. Um, and it, it is interesting to hear about all of those um about all of that history and then now it's coming back and facing this <laughs> this new massive um worldwide issue this pandemic that we're, that we're all facing but and in the first in the first year of its launch here here in Belfast we launched this time last year really and it's just been like incredible for everybody so I like what you say about the mystery of Irish whiskey because you're right there are different takes and perspectives and versions and historical records and stories and tales that get handed down. And to some people, they become the facts and to others, they dispute what they knew as the facts. And of course, none of us were around back then, but what an, think back to that time, like the 1770s, 1776 is kind of what, four years before, it predates Jameson, the official uh, establishment of John Jameson and son down in Dublin. So you're kind of getting yeah. a little bit of a head start there, but that was a, you know, you had, you had, um, new acts what was it the excise act was it in in 1779 um my dates would be a little bit off but there was a lot of change taking place in terms of taxation and regulation at the time yeah. that was kind of putting putting paid to all these illicit distillers and allowing these bigger distillers maybe maybe to to grow and to thrive and those that had the the funds to do so were able to grow and thrive and that was a big turning yeah. point for irish whiskey yeah yeah well, it, it, it's it's interesting whenever you look back on the history and you see the types of distillers that were around, like rectifying distillers, and it wasn't just distilleries. It was, you know, I, I remember um, reading back on something that, you know, Finan O'Connor had said, and he'd actually said it on the on, um, Potsdale podcast, was that he, that not all of those distilleries that they were said were like the distilleries that we would see now, which are huge distilleries and huge production. They may be very, very small distilleries. So you don't actually know the, the whole truth, but like everything, sometimes, you know, just the, the mystery of it all is really exciting. The mystery of it all is, is interesting. And it, it kind of makes you strive to be something that is in the myth, which is great because striving for Irish whiskey to come back, um, is incredible and even in the in the in the maybe short short few years from ever i was working in, behind a bar which was about five years ago and there really there wasn't that many irish whiskies around and you wouldn't have had many people coming up to the bar and asking for for an irish whiskey right. so yep yep um the, the yeah, the rise and fall, and I've heard people talk about the the different golden ages of Irish whiskey, the 1700s, 1800s yeah. being one of the golden ages, um, uh, and maybe the original, well, it's probably the second golden age after it came to Ireland in the first place in the 1300s, and I think now we're probably in the third golden age of Irish whiskey, this, this resurgence, and it's been 100 plus years since we've had this many distilleries on the island, which is remarkable. And yeah. tell me, is there, are there, so right now McConnell's, is a sourced whiskey your you, you partner with with a, a distillery south of the border there to to, to fill your bottles uh, and to, yeah. to distill for you and mature what are the plans for the brand then going forward are there any other plans afoot or in in on the cards well as i said before you know our plan is to bring um mcconnell's back to belfast totally bring mcconnell's back to belfast city and to have a distillery here in belfast city now and um, I can't tell you exactly when that is because I don't know myself, but we we are, you know, very much pushing forward to to get the distillery built here. So um, whenever we do, it'll be incredible. You know, we'll have people coming from all over to the city, uh, bringing people back to that area of the city will, will be amazing, especially for the bars and 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 the, the hotels and that and the whole tourist industry, which is suffering pretty heavily right now. So. I think 
fingers crossed that that's exactly what we want. So that that is our plans to, to have the distillery here in Belfast. What do we know? Do we know anything about the types of whiskies that were produced back then? Like, was is this whiskey in any way a hat tip to how whiskey was produced? Is, is I mean, obviously, it's a very very different production method today. Blended whiskey wasn't really a thing in the 1700s, was it? But yeah. what do we know about what whiskey was produced um, when it was being distilled in Belfast? Well, obviously, that that discussion is being had a lot these days. You know about you know pot still whiskey, what pot still whiskey, like um, yep. it, it's been had. I can honestly say that whenever I listen to those conversations, I'm constantly learning. So I don't know. And we we don't have the exact mash bill of McConnell's because a lot of the brands don't have that and they can't find it. It's not listed anywhere. They didn't keep records like we do today. So yep. whenever you like, I mean, maybe you could ask a friend at hand and see what's inside their bottle. <laughs> I'm going to we'll check it out. Test. I can check it out, see if it's anything the same. But I think that's all part of the fun of it. Do you not, do you not think so? You know, it get, really gets conversation started. It really puts Irish whiskey on the map whenever people start to question what was Irish whiskey back in the 1800s because n no one really knows exactly what Irish whiskey was then. And um, like any industry, especially um, Irish whiskey is not a young industry, but it's a growing industry. And so... People are going to experiment. People, things are going to change, and uh, hopefully, whenever we do have our distillery, then we'll be able to, you know, experiment more with with other types of whiskey. But really, to bring back a whiskey that is iconic to Belfast, we wanted to bring back a staple brand that would connect with a wide audience as well, and that's why yep. five year old blended whiskey. Um, it's our staple product and, you know, we will always have our five-year-old blended whiskey and whatever we do in the future, we wanted to get this product right. So I can't say it's exactly what it is back in the 1800s, but, you know, we're, we're trying to um, bring so many other elements into the brand right. that really do connect with with the brand. What I'm so, really hearing from you is that this is not the end of the line for uh, releases and it's only the first and that there'll be more uh, perhaps different things but um, presumably there's nothing yet to share on that front as to what could come next. No it's not that there's it's not that there's not much to share because obviously we are young and this year has been tough it's been a year where we're trying to really just make sure we bring restore McConnell's back to the city so the brand itself, um, I, I mean, you're saying yourself, it's the first time that you're really trying it on the show. So, like, why does why not get everyone in, involved in the in the blend as it is now, and then and then we'll move on to what's next. So, Dead right. I know that a lot of brands do. There, I mean, there's there's so many brands out there that are exciting and they move. They they have all of these releases and they're brilliant. You know, it's great. But not every brand is going to do the same thing. So with McConnell's, we wanted to get our stable, stable product right before, you know, we start to move to other I products. think that's a great point. I think that's a great point. And I think that the Irish whiskey market in Ireland is a completely different animal to the Irish whiskey market in America. And you um, you saw like during the week when we posted pictures, I think on Monday, I posted a picture of this bottle and I said, here's a heads up. This is what we're drinking on Friday. And people went scrambling to find it. And you saw the comments, but so many people were able to find it because there's been a great effort at distribution and getting it into retailers. Yeah. And I have to say, um, I'm saying this unprompted, McConnell's website has the best product finder I've seen on any website <laughs> in the world of Irish whiskey. I mean, I, it's it's tremendous. And people in the comments have been talking about it already, but it's not yeah. only is it a great finder for, for the whiskey, but people are shocked to find that you can get this for $24 and up across America, which, I mean, Irish people who are tuned in now are, falling off their seats at the thought that you'd get a five-year-old <laughs> blended whiskey for $24. You know, it's, it's just nothing like that yeah, exists. Totally different, yeah. Taxes and excise duty and all kinds of things. But um, yeah. so it is a very affordable product for the United States, isn't it? It is. And that, as you said, that that store finder has been a lifesaver for me, Barry, because I have people uh, private messaging me on, on Instagram constantly. Like my, my phone never sleeps. So it's been great just being able to, to direct people. It, I mean, in, in the in the market in Belfast, it's different because it's it's a US store finder, which is really good for me because I know where you can get it locally, which is really handy. 
So I just yeah. tell people exactly where if where they are and where you can get it. But I'm not going to know, especially in the US market, which um, I've learned over the last few months that it, it, it's a lot more complicated. Um, yep. So that's that store finder ha- has been great and it's been constantly updated as well. So so I'm really delighted that, <laughs> that you like it. So Greg says it's not that great at all. It didn't locate any by him as if that's as if that's the fault of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Greg. Um, Drop me a DM and see if I can I can I can figure out something for you. There you go. There you go. Now look, there are a number of states in no matter what you try and do in the United States where you're you're on a list to try and get into the state. And like the controlled states like Ohio is one where these are tightly controlled states where one department controls what gets into the entire state. The department buys everything like Ohio is my understanding is that after Pennsylvania, Ohio is the second largest purchaser of alcohol on earth. Uh, and they buy for the state. And so if you want to get on the shelves in Ohio, you've got a petition and you've got to get bars and restaurants to write letters saying, hey, we want to stock it. And it's not an easy process. Um, but obviously you've you've been able to get distribution fairly quickly, but there is an American connection, isn't there, to, to the brand yeah. um, that has helped. Can you tell us a little bit about the parent company then behind McConnell's? So... Uh- we have Kaneka brands and they have a, 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 f- a few other brands on their on their portfolio, which is they have a tequila and then they also have a, a, a bourbon, um, which is Clyde May and um, Prosper Tequila. Um, and they've they've been obviously great with, with getting the product a, across the, the states because um having having a, an Irish whiskey um back I mean, America would have been the biggest buyer for Irish whiskey back in the eighteen hundreds. So trying to bring back McConnell's to Belfast and also bring it back to the US the way it was in the past has been great. So yeah, they, they've been incredible. They run the website as well, like uh, three Kaneka brands. And um, that's really, like, there's not much more I can say that, yeah, that yeah. other than that have been a complete, they've been great to, to work with. So love all the guys at Kaneka. <laughs> the, um, I can't get over the pepperiness of this, and and I don't mean that in any of a bad way. It's just it's it's un, it's such an unusual flavor, and it's it's very different, and it just goes on and on. It doesn't leave your mm-hmm. throat, does it? No, and like actually, <laughs> my voice my voice throat actually just went there when I tried to speak. Um, the first time I tried it was was at Whiskey Live last year, and no, it wasn't last year. It was two thousand nineteen, which is really hard to believe, isn't it? I know. Um, yeah just incredible um and i was trying a lot of irish whiskies that night and sometimes whenever you're trying a lot you start to lose it but i i tried mcconnell's and i was really surprised at how long it lasted and how how nice it feels i don't even know that that's the right word but it, it feels nice like it's it rests really well on your palate so that's what that's what i loved about it when i first tried it and every time i yeah, try it texture. doesn't disappoint me yeah, there's a definite texture to it, right? So a blend of malt and grain. There are many things when whiskey producers release bottles that they can talk about and many things they can't talk about. Uh, do, do you as a brand talk about the percentages of malt and grain in the bottle or is that a, a closely guarded secret? It's not that it's a, a closely guarded secret. It's just, I mean, it, it, the percentage is, is a, a rough percentage that... Um, and that is just because in case it, you know, changes slightly or is tweaked slightly. Um, but I mean, it's it's not on the, on the bottle and it's not listed. It's not wrote, written on the bottle exactly what the split of blend is or what the mash bill is. Um, so if you, right now, it's around a 70-30 split of grain and malt. Um, okay. So, yeah. That, that answers Very your good. question. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, and we don't want to put anybody in the spot. There's things you can keep <laughs> close to your chest as well. Uh, John R. Sullivan said he had his first pour of McConnell's. Very enjoyable. So now his second. Uh, it was great to see so many people picking this up during the week. Um, and, and it goes to show that the sooner we can tell people what we're going to drink on a Friday night, the sooner they can go out and buy it. Uh, but but so far, there's been great, great response to it. Um, and it's just hard to beat at the price point, honestly. Like, people are finding it at $24. I mean, you'll pay more than that for a measure of whiskey in, in in many bars, let alone a bottle. And so, if you're if you're like in different states, is it a different pricing for you guys as well? Yeah, yeah. So in some states, the state the states set the pricing. In other states, the retailer set the pricing. 
Um, so it's going to vary. And some states don't allow discounting or don't allow pricing below a certain, um, certain level. Other states don't have such issues. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's there are nine control states, I've lost count, um, that make it very tough. But these are all prohibition era laws. Like you, you go back, you talked about the effect prohibition had on McConnell's. Like coming out of prohibition, you had all of these different interest groups lobbying for what they wanted enshrined into law and protecting their areas. And, you know, there was a lot of shadiness going on back in the day, back in the 1920s. And, and some of the rules that were written there are still the same rules today. They're prohibition era laws. And it takes a lot to undo uh, or to change these prohibition laws because you've got families that run importers and distributors and have done so for generations. And it's just a fairly entrenched system that is so complex uh, across the country. It's unreal. Yeah, no, I know I've, I've come across it. I've actually went through some journeys with people where they've been so passionate about getting a bottle of McConnell's where I followed them on their journey to get a bottle of McConnell's. And there's been times where people have actually traveled across state, which is really humbling whenever, say, I put up a post about something and I'm being enthusiastic about it. And then someone believes me so much that they actually drive across state to get a bottle of McConnell's. It's incredible. And people have done it. So hats off to them. And even that, like, there, I think there are rules, there are laws about driving across state lines with liquor from other states uh, and that you're technically committing a felony. And it's wild. Like, it's absolutely wild. Wow. And, like, how many liters you're allowed to have delivered into your state from shipping, you know, being shipped in from outside the state, from overseas. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard I mean, to keep up with. I mean, we have our own, our own sort of issues here and bugbears that you have with licensing and things you can do and different distilleries. And it, it is... Sometimes you, you feel like as if you're constantly going against the grain, especially when you are working with alcohol because of the fact, you know, drinking responsibly and, and different laws that protect different industries too whenever whenever you're working with alcohol. So it's interesting Absolutely. to see the, how different it is as well in, in different places. I know, it really is. Jamie Cotter from Hinch Distillery saying he spent two years trying to understand America for work and he still doesn't have a clue. It'll be another 20 years, Jamie, before you have a clue. <laughs> None of us have a clue. <laughs> um, Dara says, one Volstead Act, Legacy Volstead Act, of course, the name for prohibition, uh, official name, he'd be happy to do away with, is the three-tier system or even the four-tier system in Texas. And so the three-tier system is designed to, supposed to encourage competition and prevent one company or one business owning everything from distilling to distribution to retail. So the three-tier system means that you have to have a different producer, to importer, to to retailer, uh, or thereabouts, approximately, so that not one, there can't be a monopoly. So that makes it even more difficult. Um, so yeah, it's a, a complex thing to, to work your way through. And isn't that still surprising that despite all of that bureaucracy and all that red tape, that you can still get a bottle of McConnell's for 23 or $24 in America, <laughs> having been produced in the United States, or in Ireland, like it's astonishing. I know whenever you pay a lot more for it over here, to be honest, like you, you do, so. Especially when it's, it's sterling as well, your pen over here. Or, how, or much, how much do you pay for this in Belfast? About uh, 36 99 It's 37 pounds. 37 pounds. So that's almost $50, 45 $46, which is yeah. double what some people can get it. Is that amazing? The home of McConnell's. Yeah, I mean, I mean and that's, that's reasonable. There's other there's other whiskeys that you're paying a lot more for. Um, and even even whenever you're getting some of the, some of the new blended whiskey's coming out too you're paying a lot more for and that's why i'm it's my bank account is definitely being hit <laughs> since i since i took this job on when you're buying whiskeys i know i know um we're going to bring in our next guest in a, in a couple of minutes to continue our belfast team and that's going to be paul o'kane who's going to join us founder of belfast whiskey week and um, take that paul as your official heads up that we're going to be calling upon you in a minute or two um my not so subtle way immediately his camera goes on um yeah, we're going to continue our Belfast chat. Um, you have been a great cocktail maker over the past few months on social media as well, and you've been using McConnell's in cocktails. Um, what's a what's your favorite cocktail to make with McConnell's? My favorite cocktail, and I'll stand by it from like I love uh, an Irish Manhattan. Do you know, just a Manhattan with made with Irish whiskey. But I also like an old fashioned. They're they're my two favorite cocktails, and I drink them regularly. But there has been a lot, of, and I don't know whether you've been following, but I did a sort of a cocktail competition here in Belfast for in Northern Ireland, actually, for, for the, the cocktail 
industry and for the bartenders in general here. And some of the entries I got were incredible for, for whiskey cocktails. And there was a guy who, who won the competition, a, a guy called Connor. He works in a, in a bar here, um, in a cocktail bar here in Fable. And he made this cocktail, which was incredible. And I, I didn't, I read it and I didn't see on paper that it was going to be as nice as it was. Cause it's, you know, McConnell's infused with thyme. It's got elderflower and he made his own um, sort of mixture, which was a limeless lime. So it's lime, but it's not lime. And it was made it's like, yeah, I don't, it's incredible that the, the work that he put into that, into that cocktail and he called it, you know, things take time, which is great because it kind of plays on the whole time infused McConnell's, yeah, yeah. but also the fact that whiskey takes time to, to mature and the fact that uh, generally this lockdown has taken time to pass. And do you know, when, whenever we tried the cocktail, everything from the presentation to the taste of it was just incredible. So um, I don't think my cocktail journey has ended. <laughs> Once is that on your this, Instagram, Sarah, is it? Would we find some of those is, on your Instagram? It is, yeah. So you, you'll find it maybe um, a few posts down, you'll see sort of a white background. And um, one of them has like thyme leaves across the bottom of a, of a martini glass. And he put so much work into that cocktail. It's incredible. Everyone give Sarah a follow on Instagram at McConnell's underscore whiskey underscore Sarah. Um, uh, just before we bring Paul in, um, the often discussed, disputed, debated, controversial spellings of the word whiskey, it is not lost on us that uh, McConnell's is spelt without an E. And there are many great stories as to why there are differences in spellings. Uh, what is McConnell's position uh, and history of the spelling? Um, so I think this is actually one of your Mythbusters, was it, Barry? The, you put the, the E, but I, I don't know. But anyway, so the, the spelling without the E, uh, McConnell's, as I said, established in 1776, predates the introduction of the use of an E and what, whether or not you can say what, why the E was introduced. Um, and there's, there's many stories about that. McConnell's itself stayed um, throughout the production right up until 1930 and didn't actually introduce the E. So as a way of, of honouring the brand um, right through its history, we just didn't, we didn't add the E to, to the Irish whiskey. Um, and, you know, as, as you know, for Irish whiskey, it doesn't really matter. It's just that a lot of people add the E because that was tr tradition pa when it passed whenever what the E was introduced to, yep. to Irish whiskey. Makes complete sense. And uh, I think it's, it, yeah, it, a lot of people will have grown up with there just being Irish whiskey without, Irish whiskey with the E and for example, Scotch without the E and assume that that's just how it always was. But yeah. It wasn't until the late 1960s, early 1970s, when Irish distillers, which were really the only game in town, standardised it to include the uh, to include the E, even Paddy Irish whiskey, which uh, didn't have the E historically, then had the E, so that Powers and Jameson and Paddy would all have the have the E and just standardise it across the brand. But before that, like you said, um, the original spelling didn't have the E at all, and uh, so yeah, makes complete sense. Yeah, everyone is raving about your enthusiasm and your ambassadorial <laughs> skills and uh, a fellow whiskey man, Brendan Carty there. Oh, Brendan, awesome. I love Brendan. Distillery, um, a whiskey agitator and friend of the show. Uh, McConnell's twice the <laughs> brand now that it was a year ago. Fair play. <laughs> Fair play. Um, Cheers, will Brendan. You, will, you stay, will you stay on with us, will you, while we bring Paul in? Um, yeah, of course, yeah. Like, Paul, Paul's great. Paul, Paul brought me into the, the Belfast Whiskey Club and um, yeah, bad influence. There he is now. There he is. Look at him. What, what, what's that sweatshirt you're wearing there, Paul? Well, do you know what? There's an in, there's an in joke <laughs> at Belfast Whiskey Club, which is um, I'm actually the ambassador for McConnell's and I work for <laughs> McConnell's. So my, my jumper tonight is my McConnell's uh, jumper. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> huh? I love it. How much you pay for that? So the checks you know, that's what it's all about. You know, bigging up the brand. Big, you know, I actually have it just lying about. You know, just for the the sheer. Just on the floor. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. I shall I shall pour one while while, while we start. What about that sound? Though? Isn't it a great sound? Yeah. It's a quality bottle. 
It takes 20 minutes to get the cork out. It's so long. Well, that's good. Great link to it. Good, good bottle. But uh, yeah, so there, there is an in joke, and uh, and you know what? I, I'm a massive fan of of the brand. I think the brand's great. You know, it's it's such it's such simplicity. I don't know. I mean, that big harp is just class. You know what I mean? It says it all. Yeah, and it's right on the bottle. So yeah, very. What is it? The oldest, Sarah? Correct me. It's the oldest Irish whiskey brand ever. Yeah. It's all this Irish, the all this Irish whiskey brand, um, but you know we're always finding out new things, aren't we? So, so good for a blend, so good for a five. Oh, it is, yeah, blend. it is, yeah, it is. It's great, yeah. yeah. Like and this, would, you know, this would make a great, uh, a great water jug on the table when you're finished, wouldn't it? <laughs> Pouring water. You can't be throwing out these bottles. <laughs> no, Paul, everyone, this is everyone. Everyone tonight has given it really good, you know, commentary. I've been following the comments there, and everyone seems to be loving it. And here, they are, yeah. I'm moving to the states to get it cheaper. It's, it's nearly, it's nearly. We won't let you in. We're not letting you in. Um, Paul, will you move closer to your microphone? There, we have got a few people saying they can barely hear you. I can hear you just a little Listen, bit. Listen, I'll but... just, I'll just talk louder. I think. Oh, good man. Much good easier man. for me just to talk. Perfect. Louder. So very scream much. at us, shout um, at us. If we get too um, close, it's just you're going to see my, my wrinkles. You know what I mean? But I'll just talk a little. We'll bit airbrush them out for you. We, we'll Photoshop them out for you. Paul, you've been on the show before. Uh, you're, you're, you've been here many times. And uh, to those who don't know you, you are flying the flag for Irish whiskey out of uh, Belfast. And you are the man who uh, is the, the bane of male men and post men's lives all over the world because they have to carry these massive boxes up steps and stairs to deliver them when they come from Belfast Whiskey Week. Uh, would you would you introduce yourself and tell people what you do? Yeah, well, th thank you very much, um, Barry. Genuinely, and I'm, I do mean this, I'm humbled to come on this show because I watch it. And when you watch it, you, you don't really think you're going to be on. Yeah, so away. thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, look, I, I run Belfast Whiskey Club. Uh, and I also run Belfast Whiskey Week, which is a, a festival in Belfast, but really to entice people to come to Belfast to drink whiskey from around the world. But again, really an influence of Irish whiskey and giving those Irish whiskey brands and the distilleries a big platform. And last year, 20, 2020, we took the entire festival online uh, and, it, and it was a big hit. You know, we went around the entire world, as it were, Singapore, Mexico, Argentina, uh, all across the states, Canada, parts of Europe, uh, it was really, Australia. It was really nice to get all of those boxes out there, nine hundred and fifty odd boxes, out around the world, and uh, and it's going to be bigger this year, and it, it, and I do mean that in terms of being bigger. There's about seventy tastings being organised at the moment this year. That's a lot of tastings because of the pandemic. It will be online. You know, it's going to be online. People are going to be, you know asked to stay at home and, and, and take care of themselves. But if they can come to Belfast and if those restrictions are, you know, are, are eased and we can have you in a bar and because we're going to do the tastings from bars and from venues, then come, come to Belfast. But, you know, at the moment, let's stay safe. And uh, it's going to be very safe online, you know, very, very, very safe online. So yeah. I don't know how you put together these boxes and the number of samples that go into them. We, we've talked a few times. I remember you, first telling me about what you were doing and all the work that was involved and filling these bottles. And mm. when the, when the boxes, when I got boxes arriving at my door, I was blown away and I'll show people who haven't seen these before, but here's what the inside of one of these boxes looks like. Yeah. 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 yeah you know, and, and we're not, we're not, we're not changing that. So uh, these little boxes that are next to me, so we've kind of downsized. It's the exact same, the exact same yeah. box. So the same type of um, metallic clasping, the exact same type of um, you know strong cardboard that it can you can launch it around the world with uh, you know all those great courier companies that drop it at your door um, and smash it off things and still they survive. We actually had two breakages for 950 boxes. We had one broken glass and one broken bottle. And actually, what we thought was, how did that even happen? And it turns out it was the courier company literally smashing it off things because the box was that you know it was smashed up and yet that's all the breaks it's amazing. had so um yeah we've we've downsized some of the boxes 
to to make it actually a little bit easier for the postman. But um, you know, it's it's actually you know it's actually for weight going around the world just to make it a little bit easier and a little bit cheaper for people to have access to it. Um, yeah. But yeah, the exact same content. So we'll have boxes with nine liquids in it. We'll have boxes with six liquids in it. You know, and we're you know the glassware and other such likes. You know, so we're we're not we're we're not changing. We're, we're not we're, we're not changing uh, or downsizing or anything like that. In fact, we're just going bigger and bigger and bigger. And and no no better man, I wouldn't doubt you um, to deliver. And I want to know, I want to see what's what these other boxes are beside you in a second. But the um, you might have a thirst on you. Are you drinking a whiskey at the moment? What's in your glass? Because I'm about to move on to the second whiskey. Well, I, you know, there there was the McConnells. I don't have yep. the other two that you have tonight, right? No. But I'm a very lucky man. I have a lot of I have a lot of liquid lying about. So <laughs> I'd say you do. Um, yeah. So so clearly I have I clearly have a red breast twelve uh, year old cast strength batch one. Oh, good man. 16. Good man. So happy. Sarah, enough, what about yourself? Pour, happy enough to pour yep. that. Um, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Um, I have the the friend at hand, Girona. Girona, yeah, lovely. Look at that. Uh, it's lovely. You know, bush mills. That's that's good. You know, thirteen year old bush mills, forty six percent, isn't it? Um, and sherry cast finishing, very very good. But yeah, no, I love the red breast. And Barry, I'm very jealous that you guys have those small batches out there just now. Um, small batch. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm jealous. I am. Look, ah, uh, listen, it, don't it, you get enough whiskey in our color? No, we get plenty. But what? But do you know, do you know what's even greater? I mean, I, people get hung up on this. I think it's great that it's in America. I think it's great that it's out there and maybe we don't have it here because actually, do you know what? We are, we're very blessed. We get a lot of, you know, new releases and stuff. I have a bottle sitting here. I don't know if, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it, but I have a bottle sitting here, which is going to be released in the States in a couple of weeks. And it, th this is a, I mean, this would be an exclusive. And, and my, 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 my thing would be, why is it not coming to Belfast first? It's going, it's actually going to the States first. Isn't it sitting in your house, sir? It's in Belfast right now, you chancer. I a <laughs> I, 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 I thieved this one. I wasn't, <laughs> you know, so I'm not sure if I should talk about it. I mean, do you want you it can, on your you show? Can to, Barry, it's up to you. I mean, it's, you can talk about whatever you want. So listen, uh, the, the well, worst that can happen listen, is I'll cut you off. Don't tell, don't tell the <laughs> distillery that I stole the bottle off them, right? Um, Go on. I think you're telling them, but. Oh, oh, look at this. We're going to put you up full screen here now for this. What is this? Dunville's 1808. Right, and that, that's Irish whiskey. Screen. That's it. I'm taking off screen right now because it really is. Um, Look at that. It really is was stolen. So it was it was stolen. <laughs> um, um, and, and and to be honest, it's going to the states. It's in the states just now, and it will go to the states before it's in you know before it's released here. So um, yeah, I'm kind of yeah. Well, you kinda, know uh, what's that word? confused you know but listen fair play to fair play to uh Ashlandville and what they're doing there but uh yeah that's an exclusive uh, you can't have all the whiskeys though like we here here's what i'm observing lately in the world of irish whiskey is that there is a disappointment amongst people when they can't have all the whiskeys at every price point and mm -hmm. it's not feasible is it it's not it's not realistic no. that we we'd like to but it's never going to happen but I don't know that we're at the stage yet where we've told ourselves that it's okay that we can't get them all. But we still want them no. all, you know? Unfortunately, we have frenzies, don't we, Barry? People get a frenzy. People like, I need that, I need this, I need that. <laughs> and you know, it was, it was lovely to see the frenzy of Bush Mills and this new Causeway collection. It was great to see that frenzy. It was. But the problem is, you know, a lot of that's not going to be opened. And a lot of it's people are just aren't going to get to taste. So um, I, th I think one of the things about the, the Whiskey Festival you know last year specifically but again going through maybe what we did at christmas time what we're doing here at paddy's week and again going into to to, to july is taking all of those kind of things that people aren't able to get so we have a full well i say full we're missing one bottle but we have uh, nine bottles of the causeway collection being opened and and and, and being shared here in a, in, in a couple of weeks um they're for drinking they're for enjoying they? Exactly. They are, so yeah. they're, yeah. they're they're going into one of those beautiful tasting sets. In fact, it goes into a wooden box. This this one goes into a wooden box, and uh, and 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 we've opened them all. Same with the cologne. I mean, the, everyone went mental there at the end with that Hungarian. Oak. Just, you know, <laughs> that was like, a great I one. I need it. I need it. Great you one. know. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I've now opened two full sets to to share for 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 people to taste 
Oh, here women the too. Harry Freak. Um, there she is. Yes, just because, just because I believe that the you know people should get to drink it. You know. That's right. That's right. Whiskey's and for drinking. And I, I always, I'll always use the line. Yeah, I always use the line from Billy Lighton. He said, "I don't make whiskey to be gathering dust on the shelf," and I want to see people opening bottles too. 100%. Every bottle on the shelf behind me is open. I've got some lovely ones there, but they're for drinking. Like, whiskey has to be enjoyed. Jeez, you can't take it with you. No, totally. Uh, th this this crusade that we have at the moment, which is hashtag, and I've just noticed, but, you know, Brenda's put there, hashtag bottle opener. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Because actually, you know, I'm, I'm sur I surround, surround myself with lots of alcohol, but I've got lots. I mean, I have maybe 40 bottles sitting here, which are all open. Um... But then I've got maybe a, maybe an hour hundred or something sitting in front of me which aren't open, but they need to be opened at some point. Um, I do have because I want to have an RV drink with you, but I do have that. Uh, I do have a cologne, but it's not it's not the new one. It's the it's the older one. It's that oatmeal one. Oh yeah. Well, should move on That's to that one. I have, too. I have that. What's that one? So I like I like that. That's okay. a ten year old oatmeal um, Irish oatmeal. So I'm gonna have a wee. I'm gonna have a wee quick one of that. Mm -hmm. But, um, hashtag bottle opener. I, it was also on, on Twitter last year. I think Chris Hennessy started hashtag seal breakers, which I think follows breakers. the same approach. Seal breakers and bottle openers. While, while you're pouring that, let me just talk about this one whiskey here, which neither of you have. Very few people in the States can find it. And I just found it by pure chance uh, while I was um, kind of comfort shopping during the week, kind of break out of the pandemic and quarantine and kind of hiding away. Just went to a store. I, I didn't really need anything, but I just started buying things. You know that kind of way. And you're filling your basket with marshmallows and and all kinds of crazy things. And I happened upon this whiskey on the shelf, and it is in a store called Trader Joe's. And this is a single malt Irish whiskey, 15 years of age, and it was 42 dollars or about what's that, 30, 35 pounds, 15 years of age. And I thought I asked, I put a question online: Did anybody ever try it? And very few people had. And we started to try and find out: Well, where would it have come from? At 15 years of age, a single malt, you look at the label, what does it say about it? And it gives you two conflicting stories. And you you, you know, from you, you both coming from Northern Ireland will probably jump on this and know this, but the first story says, this uh, comes from an Irish whiskey making family dedicated to crafting high quality whiskey since the 18th century. So if we start with that, who could that be? A family who've been crafting Irish quality, high quality whiskey since the 18th century. And their focus is on restoring the ancient distilling techniques of Irish whiskey. An Irish family. Family. Yeah. Is, is there even a distillery that's owned by a family anymore? So yeah. my first thought was that this is the Teeling family. Because it's yeah. a single malt, right? The Teeling family was behind the likes of Tyr Connell and 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 uh, single malts that that okay. would have been of of this age, right? So that's your to me. That's the first thing I'd leap to. But then okay. you turn the label over, and it says made with fresh Irish spring water, triple distilled in small copper pot stills. No, it's bush so it can't be, right? can't be coolie. It has to be bush mills, isn't it? So it's bush mills. So the question is: so bush mills a family? Bush mills liquid, which was. Um, somehow bought you know bought by the tillings you know and then you that's know, it superbly superbly you know marketed which is really great so bush mills liquid that's 15 it. years old what's the ABG 15 year old and is it bush mills barry because is, is boan that family run too well it would have to be bush mills because there was only one distillery triple oh, distilling what? single malt 15 years ago on the island of ireland and that was bush mills it's 40 percent oh you know so what? it's a, it's an old distillery like an old yeah. family Right. So I think we've got two, and I've heard of other whiskies coming from Bushmills through the Teelings, uh, so it wouldn't be an unusual route. So, um, but very interesting that I can get a 15 year old Bushmills for $40. Do you know what? That's, that's funny. I mean, I'm glad we've got bottles just lying around, but I have a bottle here. This is a, a this is a, a 10 year old uh, Bushmills. It says an Irish on it. Yeah. An Irish. Yep. You know, so he's not telling you where it's coming from, but it's Bush Mills, it's 10 years old, it's cast strength, 47.1 percent. Um, and it's finished off in rum cast from uh, Guyana. Now, Caden Heads, you know, independent bottler, original price on this, Barry, original price about 40, about 45 quid, 40, 45 quid. Yeah, you know what I mean? and that's amazing. That's that's how things used to be priced, yeah, that, that's what it should be priced. Should be priced, yeah. Well, yeah. you love a Caden head. I've tried, 
I, I'm part of the, the Belfast Whiskey Club and we have tried so many Kinheads, Kinhead whiskies. And they're incredible. They're always brilliant, like, but. You stick this up on the screen. Um, you for those who are wondering, oh. Oh, single malt, matured an ex-bourbon cask, 15 years, sadly only 40% ABV, but for $40, we can't be complaining. Um, and I have to say, it it tastes to me and it noses like a young Napo 21-year-old, not a 16-year-old, but like that, the bourbon casks of the 21-year-old, it's, it's, it's almost like, an Apog 19. It's it's that wonderful, lively orchard fruits uh, that come through on the malt. Mm. Is that the front yeah, of the awesome. bottle, Barry? It is, yeah. I couldn't find a single stock photo online of it, so I just took my own photo. It's a it's a nice front of a bottle. Like it looks like the back of a bottle, doesn't it? it looks oh like yeah, yeah. And this is a green grocer, so am I right? You said it was a green. Yeah, grocer. it's like kind of a more of like a little hipster grocer store where all own right. brand and. You can you can get your 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 shoes made out of hemp or all like you know whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Again, it's you know what? It's um, so, it's, is, is it not just so much fun that, that these whiskies are becoming accessible? You know, that's right across the states. That that's been that to me that's been great fun. Um, listen, Barry, you caught me unawares when we had you know when I was on it at Christmas time. You caught me unawares. You were asking for a, a toast. And I was listening, I was listening, listening. The only time Scotsman's ever, you know, toast whiskeys, you know, Rabbi Burns night, really, and, and Hogmanay, potentially, you know. But uh, so so I definitely have a coat this time. So I have one just prepared because I thought if they asked me, I've got one. So we'll take a make. toast anytime. We, we'll take a toast or a song anytime on this show. Well, do you know yeah. what? I'll maybe try a wee bit of both. I'm not a great singer, but I can try. But definitely a toast. So this one I thought so. was really funny. It's a wee funny toast. Don't ever... Don't ever cry over any milk that you might spill. Just be glad that it wasn't your fucking whiskey. <laughs> Jeez, you waited three months for that. I did, I. I Sorry. Did, I. It's, it's, I just thought it was a great wee quote. I thought, no, that needs to be used. Um, yeah. And well, I, can, I can sing a little bit, but only really wet, you know, wet, wet, wet songs are... Uh, you know, something are they as good? Are they as good as your toasts? Or are they better than your toasts or worse than your toasts? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Um, uh, Barry, Barry, someone asked me, was that um, did I have a song prepared? No, don't get your hopes up, right? And honestly, I wouldn't even dare sing on here because I have the biggest crow voice in the entire planet. I think I would. I'll say. I think I would put you off air. I wish. I wish I said like I. I'm from a big family. Like I have. Um, six sisters and one brother and there's been times where people have said to me you know he's would have been great as a band you know you know all you girls and stuff but no way we are terrible like awful singers there's so. there's tremendous appreciation and understanding and uh kind of a a community like feeling when somebody sings here whether it's good bad or indifferent the <laughs> arms of the community wrap around the whiskey arms of the community wrap themselves around you so never never feel like you can sing a song here i don't know whether it's the, the embarrassment of, of not being able to sing where you hold back you know you know you hold back or else you put on a crow voice so i don't actually know if if anyone ever tried to belt out a song whether they could sing or not but honestly and you come from a family of um eight you get cut down a lot. So you get told, get back in your box, you can't sing. Yeah, sure. So maybe, that, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> Never stop Daniel, Paul, I'd say. Daniel says you must sing. Look, Sarah, for a song. No, Daniel says. no. This is what Daniel. I'm saying. I, I, would, I will not take Barry off air. With well, my he also voice. said this. Look, he also said Paul for a song. He's just I typing names in there for a song. He's yeah. He's a, yeah. He's a, he is Barry a for a song. Barry, go on. No, no, listen. We're, we're here. Really you're, the, you're the guest. Do you know it's been it's actually really quite refreshing listening to your shows and having some you know some people come on the singing uh, it has been good i know phil crawford he was on with the guitar do you know you've had some i love that episode i actually on. watched a lot of that episode it was yeah. great yeah and yeah, we'll have more of that too we sure we even had we had omar fitzel but he came on and he played a recorded video of him singing as opposed to doing it live he was like britney spears lip syncing <laughs> Yeah, no, no, that's that's pretty. <laughs> um, Paul, go on. I have a question for you, Paul. So, Belfast whiskey. Sarah kicked off the night. 
praising and heroing this industrial city, this phoenix rising from the ashes. Uh, whiskey being a big part of Belfast's future, I can see. What do you see coming down the path for Belfast? What's on the horizon? What are you excited about for Belfast? No, 100%. It, it, it is, there's, a, there's a clear focus from people looking at Belfast as being a place where distilleries can now maybe come into play. So I know that Sarah is, you know, is, you know, obviously going to be uh, championing the Crumlin Road Jail um, and where they hope to have Belfast Distillery. Um, well, am I not allowed to say that? You can no. say whatever you want. I will Sarah's got her own things she can and can't say. Again, <laughs> again, um, Some man in a McConnell's cool. shirt is talking about potential locations. <laughs> So look, I, ideally, ideally we've got, ideally we've got a, a, a distillery up in North Belfast, I and mean, that's the, the location. And then we've got potentially, from what I hear, another three distilleries on, on on the cards, and that's really interesting. So potentially, people looking at planning applications, people looking at you know design projects, bringing small distilleries, little micro distilleries into Belfast city, um, and that would be really really good. But it's just outside of the city that you know. That, that there's so much going on. Literally hinges a taxi driver, you know, <laughs> drive away. Copeland again, not that far, just down to the peninsula and then down to Kirkcubbin for Eshelnville. I, you know, what what that means is we've got a big city, Belfast, which has all these distilleries in and around it now, which, um, yeah, will not not put it back where it, where it was because that's mental. That would be, that would be um, un, unthinkable to have the amount of whiskey production that was going on in, in Belfast ever again. Um, you know, you can you cannot imagine by it's very difficult even to explain it. But if you if you take, you know, if you took a, a one of these um what do you call it, like a drone over Belfast and you zoomed in on the places where we used to have distilleries, you know, we're looking at places where there's housing estates now that that, that were that big, that a whole housing estate fits into a distillery. You know, look you know, massive pieces of land, um, and which took up, you know, vast vast swathes of the city itself. So, we will never have that. We will never get to the point where we have production out outstripping Scotland, which it did. So we won't have that ever again. But we, what we will have is that legacy that we can bring back and have that conversation and have those historical, you know, tours, have those historical moments where we can, you know, show people what it was all about. But then have those, you know, those new tourist attractions, those new places to go and try new, new whiskey. And you know, it's not going to happen overnight. But I would suggest maybe in five to ten years' time, we're, we're looking at, you know, and I, I would hope by then maybe three, potentially four distilleries in the, the city limits of Belfast. And then, you know, dotted round the place, maybe an R6, 7, you know, that people can easily travel to so it's not just taking that lovely you know bus trip up to bush mills but it's going local and locally you know maybe doing maybe a, a day tour to maybe four distilleries at a time so yeah big tourist attraction really for for whiskey in the, in the couple of years and that's what the the i suppose that's one of the biggest aims about the festival is to bring that idea back is to bring this idea that belfast is central to to whiskey um in ireland you know and and and, and we should respect that and give it its place, but um, yeah, and, that, and that's probably why, I, although I live in Belfast, probably really why I chose to, 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 to run with that, and I think we've talked about that before, you know. Did you, so you both grew up in Belfast, Sarah, you grew up in Belfast, Paul, you grew up in Belfast? No, 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 can you not tell me that beautiful accent, I'm a Scot. He's Scottish, he's got a Scottish wait, accent. Wait, you know, wait, 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 you're Scottish? I would suggest, though, my, my family are all from uh, the, the Antrim coast, you know, for, the, you know, my grand, my granny's born uh, born up in Cushion Dun, Cushion Doll, you know. So, um, you know, I, 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 I definitely feel at home here, and I've been here for 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 well over ten years, you know. And how I'm, have I never known that you're Scottish? How have I never known this? Beautiful accent. People kind of. All right, listen. Confused. We need to take Paul off. We we can't have any Scottish people here. So that's the end of Paul. He's gone. This is a this is about Irish whiskey and not people who came and stole our <laughs> process for making whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can come back. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Barry? You're, you're, you're just right. You're just right. So, you're just, <laughs> you know what? When we talk about that history of, of, of whiskey, I've never been one to debate whether or not Scotland was the, the leader. I, I've always I've always made it quite clear that I believe that Irish whiskey was the forerunner. 
Oh, well, the most uh, Irish the Scotsman with, there is out there. Yeah, I need the, to say, is that, that, where's your passport? Comes from Ireland. But what I would say is, I'm, I'm caught up with, I, I love all types of whiskey. But I, I was introduced, Barry, I was introduced to um, Irish whiskey through a Redbreast 15. I never looked back. That was my first whiskey, first Irish whiskey, Redbreast 15. Never looked back. In fact, I've continued to, to, to keep going forward. I think I've tried the majority of the red breast range. Everyone knows that I've cracked all the dream casks, that I've cracked all the single casks, done all of that. You know, I've cracked as much IDL product as possible, you know, opened as much of it. Um, I, I'm a massive, and everyone who knows me personally knows that I'm a Bushmills lover, that I love Bushmills, <laughs> that, I, I think that, that I think that Bushmills single malt is just phenomenal. And actually, as a single malt, not... And I know Sarah's laughing there because, you know, I'm, a man being such emotional about, you know, a product yeah. is, is, is really hard to believe, isn't it? I think she's I'm, really not, I'm laughing at that comment down there. Have you read the comment? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that. Clay, that, Clay you're just right. You're just right. <laughs> Listen, Clay McFame, William, <laughs> William Wallace, you know, if you ever watch that wee film Braveheart and you see his wife and his child getting murdered, they were murdered down the road from where I, from where I was born. You know, that's my claim of fame. Uh, um, allegedly, allegedly, we don't talk about murders here on the lock-in. You know, it was the, <laughs> like the English. Um, anyway, for some um, reason, when you first started talking to me, because you were talking about Belfast Whiskey Week, because you were talking about Northern Ireland, because you're talking about Irish whiskey, my mind just tuned in to a Northern Irish accent. So you could have been speaking in a Japanese accent to me. <laughs> 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 no, listen, I, I, you know, it's, it's, I don't mind being, um, I really don't mind that, you know, being a... Uh, uh, no, Paul, you definitely got a, a bit of an Irish twang going on. You, you've listened to so many people speak that you've, you, you're you losing it a bit. Maybe we could get you talking like in a Cork accent. That would, that would make you pure Irish. Like if you started saying, <laughs> how, how, how are you getting on, like, would you, would you like a whiskey, you would? Grand. I'll pour you a whiskey there now, buy. No bother. You'd be sorted. Listen, if, sorted. I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I mimic a southern accent, I'd probably get shot. You know what I mean? It would be, it would be not in my best interest. But um, no, I was just saying about Bruce Mills. I mean, there's just something about this because, you know, and Barry, I know you champion. I know you do. All Irish whiskey. And, and and you're a massive fan of pot still and and so am i and pot still is its own really is its own you know that you cannot compare pot still to single malts i don't think that's fair i don't think it's a fair comparison but what we can compare is single malts with single malts and i love to compare bush mills with scottish single malts because i think bush mills stands up against the you know all the great scottish distilleries and in fact i would go as far as to say that the triple distilled bush mills malt outstrips a lot of Scottish distilleries and I, I have no problem saying that you know and, I, and I'm a fan of of Springbank I'm a fan of you know Glen, Glendronic you know I'm a fan of these you know oh our you know our bag you know Bonner Haven and uh, Bowmore I'm a fan of all these distilleries and their whiskies but Bushmills goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with them all day long as a single malt um but yeah it's very difficult to 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 compare the single malt and the single pot still. I find that very hard because they are different beasts, totally different types of I was whiskey. wondering why you were sneaking scotch whiskies into some of your last boxes there and you were doing some scotch tastings. I thought, is he just, is he is he trying to branch out of it? But no, you were only going home. <laughs> no, yeah, no, just, like, Barry, Barry, there's a, there's a, there's a, whenever you're at the Belfast uh, Whiskey Club, it's not just about, you know, uh, whiskies in Ireland it's just whiskies in general and it's such a learning curve and uh, whenever Paul brings it in the whiskies there's so many distilleries all those distilleries that he just rhymed off there I hadn't heard of for uh, Belfast Whiskey I, I, Club. I'll give, you I'll give you an example Barry two stacks yeah we love the two stacks don't we everyone loves two stacks yeah. in America you guys are out of drama in a can the most jealous thing I, I'm I am jealous. How dare, how dare a company from here, Two Stacks, go out to the States and give you guys the beautiful little drams in a can. They're launching the here on the lock-in, March 19th. They're launching here officially. Don't even. Don't, don't even. <laughs> and you know what? They're great guys. Absolutely brilliant guys. But look, we would have that, right? So we would have the Two Stacks and we yeah. would, you know, put it right next to, for example, sick. Let's have a look. Okay, we'd maybe do something like this. We'd maybe have some, uh, you know, some three ships maybe mm. from uh, from South Africa, do you know what I mean? So, you know, we wouldn't be, um, 
you know, we we certainly wouldn't be all you're open-minded. Sure, sure of, some um, of those some of those Scottish distilleries are bottles you were talking about earlier. So we'd have yeah. oh, yeah. Watford, but then we yeah. put it right. But next not to even us. that. Well, you also you also do a lot of <clears throat> bourbons as well. Bourbons is good because I wouldn't have been able to taste a lot of bourbons unless it was with Belfast Whiskey Club. So, so what I see, Barry, have you, Barry, Barry, you must have come across this before, right? Because it, it no doubt is big in the states, right? But check the size of this bottle. Look, look at the size of this. The size of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's for uh, mounting on an optic upside down. Yeah, one point, like the size 1. of your 1. head. Seven five. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, and and what and, and such a, a big a bottle, bottle for for, for a, a pile of swill. You know, so cheap, so cheap. <laughs> Listen, what are we focused on? Why are we focused on scotches and bourbons? But we should be heroing Irish no, whiskey. No, exactly, exactly. But they have enough. They have enough to be. They're grand. <laughs> they're doing fine. Don't worry about them. Um, yeah, leave them. But listen, the okay, the these Scotch distilleries though, they're closer to ye than Middleton is sure. Is that if, if you know they're, they're some of those distilleries are forty miles away from me in Belfast, really, aren't they? Fifty miles away from me. If you go across the, across the channel, there they're closer to you. Can get to them faster than you can get to Middleton. Um, would there be much Scotch consumed in Northern Ireland? No, no, <laughs> no just no. I mean, it's Scotch is not uh, Scotch does not focus, and Scotch does not does not focus uh, their attention onto the not even the Northern Irish, but the Irish market in general. You would have Diageo. Um, obviously, you know, having an influence in Ireland and thus a lot of their distilleries and their branding would come into to, to Ireland, but not really. All the independents yeah. aren't doing that. But what we have done is bring them on board. So we're bringing them to Scotland, you know, from, from Scotland to Northern Ireland, particularly, and, and, and getting that um, conversation started. So we've done it with a few brands. We're now doing it with some independent bottlers as well and bring them on board. So you'll see... In the festival itself, you you see a hell of a lot more Scottish distilleries involved. So when is the festival? When, when when officially? What are the dates of the festival? Yeah, so the date of the date of this year's the real festival because there's the wee mini one here at Paddy's Day. You know, they've got four tastings then, but the real one takes place the twenty third to the thirty first of July, and it's seventy tastings. It will be broadcast online. So what I mean by that is not what we're doing just now, uh, Barry. It's not going to be as uh, as intimate as this, but it's going to be it's going to be broadcasting like a TV kind of idea, so TV studio kind of stuff, whereby we will have hopefully participants in the room, but it's not it's going to be the brand ambassadors, it's going to be the 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 the, 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 the distilleries, it's going to be it's going to be some of them are going to be in distilleries, so a, a big shout out to the, some of the distilleries who are going to be hosting Belfast Whiskey Week uh, this year. That literally we're going to have a studio set up in their distillery. And we're going to be running the, the programs from there, but um, yeah, it's 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 big. I mean, it's big in so far as that it's big, um, the reach now. I think I, what I want to say to I know that you've got a beautiful American audience, but you also have audience from all around the world to join you. There's definitely I'm looking some of this chat. We've got people from Norway, uh, we've got people from Germany here tonight, uh, people from different countries. But for those in America, I, we're aware of the rules. And the implications that you know we're not supposed to put alcohol into certain states, and that's totally understandable. We totally get that, uh, and obviously the, the partners that are working to make it happen. So the likes of Irish whiskey auctions um, have lots of customers in the states. So we've got they, they've got lots of customers in the states, and they know how to get product into the states. They've been doing it for 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 for, for the last year now. I don't think we let anyone down in the states. No one. And we had a lot of people in the States and lots of different areas getting, you know, boxes. But the idea, I suppose, this time around is that, um, you know, maybe if you have a focal point in the States, maybe if there's someone who, you know, has a license specific and wants to order boxes directly to that one store, to that one venue, then we'll send them directly, you know, using the, the correct courier service for inter, you know, inter-trade, um, you know, supply and we can you know we can do that so it's about making sure it's available accessible we don't want to let people down so we don't want to pretend that you know we can put it into your state unless we you know unless we're accepting it so you know we we work very hard with uh, anthony irish whiskey auctions to ensure that we know where we can go we tested a lot of stuff so 
I know, you know, you got your box two days after you kind of said to me, I'm not sure if I'd get a box. And it came to I, I got my boxes so, and I didn't even order them. I got two boxes in the door. That's how good his, his service is. Even if you don't order them, you'll get them, which is amazing. <laughs> but it's, it, it, it's a tried and test. I got mine service. hand delivered. So. Try, <laughs> We actually, what what we found is it was it was really it was really quick to get stuff into the East Coast of America, very quick. But we actually found we were getting stuff into Australia very quickly as well. So we, product was landing in Australia within a five day to seven day period. Uh, that that to me is really important. That that that's pretty damn quick. Um, you know, and no one was waiting any longer than seven days for the for product. So you know, it, it is great. And we want that to continue. We want people to immerse themselves in the festival. So a festival is its not just whiskey tastings. It's lots of things. So it's music. It's comedy. its And if you're here in Belfast, it's going to be food. So you're going to have some food pairings. You're going to have that ability to, 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 to taste whiskey and, 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 and good food. But yeah, anyone who is just watching online, we want them to drink. So there is one special package. What I would say, Barry, if I'm going to sell it this year, because I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a salesman. I'm not like that. And we don't. No, no, you, you, you're not a man for self-promotion in any way at all. No, this is as much no, as clear. Definitely not. But what <laughs> I would say, but what I would say is there's going to be one box specifically. As I say, 70 Tastings, you'll see all those beautiful brands that you, you know, that you've been used to. Um, maybe, and maybe a lot of new brands that you've never seen before. But there's going to be one box which will have 30 different whiskies in it. And that one box when you look at the price point on it, you'll be blown away. So, and, and that'll include your... <clears throat> Did we lose Paul? Yeah. We lost him. He's cut out. He's frozen in immortality. There he goes. He, I think, got shocked himself at the fact that he'd have a box with 30 whiskeys in it and he uh, <laughs> fell off the seat. He'll come back on. Here he comes. <laughs> Here he is. Could you imagine? It comes to the announcement and they kick you <laughs> off again. Must have kicked well, there's off. actually a promotion limit. This The system is set to detect <laughs> promotions and just kicks you off automatically. Yeah, like, Makes you work so, hard for it. So that, 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 to me, that one box, to me, that one box, if, 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 I'm, if, I'm sitting in, if I'm sitting somewhere, let's say it's beautiful Ohio, or let's say it's you know New York or something, and I, I want to taste a plethora of whiskey, then I'll be looking at this one box when it launches at the uh, on the twentieth of March when it launches. Then how much does this one box cost? You cut off just as you're about to tell us. It, it, you know, cheaper than you'll ever imagine. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Cheaper than I ever imagine. Uh, five. Well, everyone, a five dollar box it'll coming your way. Whiskeys. It'll be thirty whiskeys for less than a hundred quid. That's amazing. Really? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And is it limited? Limited. To certain, there'll be limited, no, there'll be limited quantity on that. Yes, hundred percent. But you know that that's the that's the to me. If I was if I was just wanting to taste a massive selection of different types of, whiskey, I'd be looking at that box. You know, that way this. But if you if you're if you're actually in Belfast, and you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, things you know, you can you can be in Belfast today. Definitely. So you know, if you get a box and you're in Belfast or you're around Belfast at the time of the festival, you'll get your boxes all everything will be boxed and sent to people. But if you're in Belfast, we'll, you just come to the tasting. Come, you know, come to the tasting, come and yeah. be involved in the tasting. Look, we know there's gonna be super restrictions. We know this, right? But we also know that that that, that in Belfast particularly, because of the British government, we need to talk about this, the British government are gonna push for an internal holiday arrangement to allow people to travel within the UK for holiday periods in the summer. And they will push people to open up their 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 restaurants, their hotels, their bars will be open in, in the UK. That That's definitely the message that's coming. So they don't want people to travel abroad and come into that quarantine period. They don't want to see that. They want people to travel internally within the UK. So you will see Belfast, some of the tourists, you know, you know parts of uh, tourism within Belfast opening up. You'll definitely see some of the stuff which is outside, like the Giants Causeway and stuff. That'll have to open up, and you know, yeah, come if you're in Belfast, come. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you to risk, you know, your health, your, 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 your whatever. You know, to keep yourself very safe, and that's why the box is going to you, to your house, to your door, and take part, and you know, online or or through this, uh, 
you know, through through this broadcast. If we can, if we can get over there, we'll get over there, and I'd be the first in line if if it's safe to do so, and they'll allow me in, and I don't have to spend two weeks in a hotel in City West in Dublin before I can do anything. But um, I'm curious. There's a few questions Jamie coming to the audience. <laughs> Jamie, <Collier. laughs> um, Sarah, your your top two or three bars in Belfast, and then I'll go to Paul. But Sarah, yours first. That is so hard. That is so hard. Being from here, and you can imagine how, how many people I know, that is tough. But, okay, I my top two or three bars. Uh, my after work drinks bar is definitely the Duke of York. Um, and then White's Tavern is incredible for, it's new and has impressed me, but White's Tavern is the oldest bar in, in Belfast. And then I have to say for, you know, if you're really wanting to have a, a great drink, it would be Burt's Jazz Bar. What's that one? The last one? I, I missed that one. You're wanting to have a, a cocktail and, you know, like a maybe late night drink, uh, Burt's Jazz Bar is incredible. Okay. All right. Okay. So two there that I hadn't heard of before. I've heard of the Duke of York, but not the other two. Um, Paul, what about you? I think, well, first of all, it's definitely the Duke of York. It's <laughs> most definitely the, the Duke of York. And probably the Duke of York again. And thirdly, the Duke of York. But I think <laughs> that, um, you know what? It, it, it's interesting. I like Sarah touched on, on Whites there. I mean, Whites used to have um, used to have its own whiskey. So Whites was a, you know, it was a tavern which had its own whiskey. So Whites oh, 22 is, is the label out there, you know, that you, you might come across. Uh, Irish yeah. whiskey, um, but yeah. So I, I would definitely be picking the Duke of York only for the fact is that it is one of those places that, and Barry, I'm sure you've been, but it's one of those places that anyone never. who visits Belfast, you've never been, then Barry, so it's, you need to visit. It is a museum. Barry, you got to go there. Like you got it's fifteen museum. years since I've been to Belfast. Believe it or not, well, fifteen it's a, years. It is a museum. It is a place where not only is there lots of Irish whiskey, literally bottles from you know from. 18, you know, from the 1800s are there, um, but it's everything, it's memorabilia, it's, you know, seven trays, it's um, water bottles, it's, you know, postcards, it's advertising, it's the whole thing. And it, it See, see like all those things, things we were talking about, all those whiskeys without the, without the E, see a yeah. lot of the memorabilia is whiskeys without the E, that's how old it is, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Um, bar number two. For, for traditional stuff, I like a little bit of traditional music. I like a little bit of traditional music. And the guy absolutely has a classic um, Irish whiskey portfolio. So places with Irish whiskey portfolio, I would definitely say Madden's. So Madden's <gasps> Bar. And Brilliant. It's definitely Brilliant. For me, if you want to go in there, you know, fiddly D music, people talking Irish to you, Barry, if you really want to talk, it, you know, talk about something which is um, traditional, everyone in there, or, or the regulars are all Irish speakers. They're, they're a massive fan of, of promoting the language. And I suppose thirdly, I, 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 look, I like I like Bittles Bar for two reasons. One, if people see Bittles Bar, and it's actually, if I can only bring this bottle up again, I don't want to keep on doing it because I know that we're not maybe supposed to see it, but that, that bar there, yeah. that building beautiful there, bar. for all those beautiful. beautiful people in New York and all those beautiful cities that have those iron top buildings, Flat iron, yeah. look at that, yeah. That's, That's Bittles Bar, and Bittles Bar, uh, John Bittles uh, and his sons, I know Kieran, uh, but those guys do a fabulous job, uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, was Bittles Bittles Bar, job. Is it Bittles Bar that famously uh, dropped the bottle of Middleton yes. Pearl? John smashed up his pearl, smashed it up, um, and because he smashed it up, he was given a, a replacement this size. <laughs> so he got a replacement miniature. You know, I mean, fair play to him. But That's the only time you get a free, That was honestly free such a hard question, Barry. That was terrible for me, especially growing up and living in Belfast, me not I calling out some of the wonderful bars. And then there's Fanula saying about um, Kelly's. Kelly Sellers, incredible bar as well. Lads, can I we, can we just think about the time when we're all going to be able to just do a whiskey pub crawl of these locations? Wouldn't it be mental? Oh, insane. Can't wait. Buzzing for it. No, super. No, Barry, I should, I should have said Kelly Sellers because they actually sponsored my football team. I should have said that, <laughs> you know. 
Uh, well, doesn't the Juga Yola, aren't they part of your tastings too? Uh, aren't they part of your, they're your licensed yeah. premises for the tastings? Yeah, so Juka York are, Juka York are a massive, um, I'd say a massive sponsor of both Belfast Whiskey Club and Belfast Whiskey Week. So if it wasn't for the likes of um, Willie Jack and Paul O'Hare from the from the Juka York, and the, like, so they, that, that establishment is the Juka York, it's the Heart Bar, it's the Dark Horse, and it's the Friend at Hand off-license, which only sells Irish whiskey and is an Irish whiskey museum in itself. Those guys really are, are, are the backbone of what I've been able to do. If it wasn't for them, you know, if it really wasn't for what, what that kind of support, the licensing support there, I'd have, you know, things might not have moved. And again, it's the same with that Irish whiskey auctions. The, the, the key partners here are Irish whiskey auctions, are the, the friend at hand, Duke of York, and for the bottling pro- point of view, it has been Eshconville Distillery. So the, the rules about bottling, you know, and dismantling w- liquids and stuff, you can't just do it in your house. These things are done. So Eshconville have been a massive supporter of, of the festival, massive supporter of Belfast Whiskey Club, and and generally have, have made it so much easier. I've been able to take over the distillery and go in and and, 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 and have been helped by their staff and, and the like. So it's been... There are people behind the scenes. There's a lot of people who make yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people who make it happen. It's not just me. And if it was just me, that'd be unreal. But it's not. There's a lot of people, and they, they, they make it, it happen. You know, they make it happen. You know. For for those who've just joined us, um, I'm being held captive in Belfast um, against my will. Um, I thought I was going to Cork, but I ended up in Belfast. Um, we're talking about. Great Belfast bars, Belfast whiskies, revivals of whiskey brands, Belfast Whiskey Festival, Whiskey Week. Um, a lot of amazing things going on in Belfast. Um, if you've just joined us, um, we'd always appreciate a like and a share. Share this to your profile or a group you're part of. Just let people know the crack that we have here on a Friday night. We can't all get together in person. So what we're doing in the meantime is we've got our little virtual old pub here that we'll meet on a weekly basis and have a bit of a lock-in and talk talk, crack, and shite, and all the appropriate things that you do if you were locked into a pub, but now we're doing them virtually. Um, I'm moving on to my third drink of the night, and that's Redbreast Small Batch, and Paul shaking his head as if he doesn't have 40 different bottles around his feet uh, to <laughs> choose from, and he wants 41. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want I want you to I, want, I just want you to sicken me and I I've not do you know what I haven't heard the tasting notes for this yet so okay, this I'll is be interesting I want to hear what I get from you Barry because I'm jealous that we don't have it yet but I know at some point I'll get one you know I'll have to pay over the odds but I'm sure I will get one you know I so, love the color yeah. I really do love the like the the blue on on the bottle it's really mm. like that isn't it. It came in a box. I think it's throughout the box. Um, but yeah, it is like like a baby blue, a baby blue box that came with it. But uh, yeah, like that little baby blue that's on the label. Yeah, I, I genuinely that has caught my eye. I recognise that. So um, a, a few details on this. Uh, we had Dave McCabe, the blender from Middleton, uh, on uh, last week to walk us through a tasting of this, uh, which was fantastic. And uh, this is a very unusual red breast for 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 my pennies. Uh, it follows, it's kind of, to me, it's like a, a Lestau, a Redbreast Lestau cask strength. It follows the uh, kind of the same journey as a Redbreast Lestau, which is... I think I have that. Spirit, is, yeah, maybe if you have Lestau there, grab it. Um, it's following the path of a Lestau in that the spirit is matured in a mixture of ex-bourbon, ex-sherry casks, uh, in this case for nine years. Um, yeah, nine years. And then it's vatted together. So there's only 50, 50 bourbon, uh, 50 barrels that are vatted together into 18 uh, fresh Oloroso sherry casks for a final 10 weeks of a, of a maturation. So it's kind of that Lestau process of ex-bourbon, ex-sherry, married together, and then a finishing period. Lestau finishes for what, up to a year in the fresh Oloroso sherry casks. This one is just 10 weeks in the fresh Oloroso sherry casks. Uh, it's bottled at cask strength. This one is uh, 50, it's batch 119, 58.7%. And there's about 12,000 bottles were released in total uh, across the US. Um, so 18 sherry butts were all that were uh, remaining at the end of, uh, of the maturation period. And it takes a while to open up, I'll be honest. On, on first nose and first sip, there's something bitter about it on the, first, on the first nose and the first sip of it. But it opens up and it gradually builds and builds and builds in a way that I've not experienced at Redbreast before. 
normally I'm getting that flavor almost immediately, but this one, I think there's been unanimous feedback on it. 20 minutes in the glass, half an hour in a glass, and it really starts to show itself, really starts to open up. And where do you, where do you, where, where does it sit in the family? Where does it sit? I mean, where, where do you think it, it lies, you know? Is it as, is it going to be as popular as, it, as the, the 12 year old cash strength? You know, I'm just looking at this one just now. This is an R12 year old cash strength. This is one yep. of the, the newer ones. This is this. Uh, Looks very similar, yeah. Similar yeah B, this is a B2, the B2 version, B219. Um, but yeah, I I like, I mean, I like this. I mean, it's, you know, as, a, as, as the cash strengths go, the, the 12 year olds are absolutely brilliant. Does that, does that there, is it, a, is it a kind of step up from the lust style? Is it, you know, is it, is it if I recall correctly, Dave mentioned that it sits somewhere between the red breast Lestau and the 12 cask strength. Right. So this is, well, it's what? I have it's the it's oh, oh, fair play. Great stuff. Actually, we've got the whole lot in there. We could, we could, we could make it ourselves. Um, yeah, it's somewhere between the Lestau and the cast, the 12 year old cask strength. So this is like a nine year old, approximately whiskey or nine, nine and a half year old. Um, it's, it's got unusual notes on the nose. There's kind of a, herbal herbaceous kind of earthy notes some people were detecting i see here in the comments like even a gin note even kind of a juniper -y kind of a herbal note on the nose now funny funny enough you actually get that on the the new 12 year old cast strengths there's, a, there's mm -hmm. a slight kind of um yeah not floral but yeah that kind of yeah potentially floral you know that kind of that kind of note yeah interesting What's the colour like, Barry, on it? Because the colour that it saw is something that kind of shocked me, especially coming from a darker bottle. It doesn't Very feel dark. as dark. It's not as dark as the Lestau. So no, that is I'm guessing that extra period in the Oloroso casks, giving it some of that extra kind of European oak contribution, uh, that only 10 weeks in the finishing on the uh, on the small batch here doesn't give it. On the first, the first sip you get, it's instant red breast Lestau. You know those those kind of musty sherry notes that are just like you walking into a wet cellar. Yeah, it's, the best it, way. It hits you. It hits you even before yeah. you get knows it. It, it really yeah. it does. I think you were lucky enough, Barry, to try the the thirty year old um, all port. Yeah, massive uh, fan. Me, yeah, yeah. Oh, unreal. Yeah, yeah. I have it there. I might even take a sip of it now tonight. I have it there. On the shelf, you see it. Be it's an absolute beast. And what about the fact, right? What about the fact we're sitting here and we're chatting away, and all of a sudden, you know, we managed to like sell it out, really? You know what I mean? It's just, um, I, I, w I was watching this group. I was, you know, the power that you have, whether or not you think you might have any power, you have a lot of power, a lot of persuasion. Because I tell you what, watching that conversation where everyone was like, there's 23 left, there's 22 left, there's it was unreal. Left. You know, I was like, I need to go and buy another bottle. This is really going to start to annoy me. I need to go buy another one before they're all gone. <laughs> and um, I know by pure chance, we counted. Get one. We counted 60, 60 bottles went to our Facebook group. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, you know, it was I, unreal. I, I, that's See, it's that's it's sort of hyster hysteria. Is something that is so new to me. You know, I don't know whether it's always been the case, but but even the other the other week, uh, Paul when we were on um you know, the Belfast Whiskey Week tasting and the Cologne, you know, <laughs> the release of Gloria came out and everyone oh just bought like 20 bottles or whatever. That was the, shocking. The chaos, of the, the chaos of the Cologne Gloria. For those that don't know what the Cologne Gloria is, it's a, it's a coffee liqueur which got released by accident by... Um, and got bought drink, all, by, all within two minutes of why we were all live on, on a whiskey tasting. Is insane. The hysteria is mad, and I think it's something that the the industry is neither ready for um, or nope. is logistically structured for. You know, uh, like you see the things like the dream casks and the and now the releases of Middleton Very Rare and the 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 absolute madness and insanity of the pursuit of these releases is just mind boggling. You know, the, the, the one thing I would say about the dream casks, right, and and, and the thing the thing about those is that in the main they're quite good. Like they're they're good and they're limited and, and a real limitation, i.e. they've they've all been less than nine hundred bottles. That's limited. That MVR madness it, it is is what it is. Mad. It is not it is not people are not, it's not being, rational. People are not being 
they're not being lo- lo- like logical in their th- thought process at this point. They're like, okay, first of all, I, I like the fact that you can go and buy a bottle and it maybe relates to the child's birth or your year of birth or maybe it has yeah. like a connotation to your wedding anniversary or something. That's great. So 2020, you know, will be a, a year to remember for many, many negative things, but I'm sure there's lots of positives. However, to, to go and to bust bust yourself to the point where you're spending lots and lots of money on something which actually the next year no 2021 will have a full complement um go you know going out this year at different yeah. stages but we're talking about lots of thousands like tens of thousands of bottles yeah, yeah. and it's i think nice. people even and fair play to idl idl even tried to explain this idl even came out and said listen there's a lot of there's a lot of whiskey there relax but you know the um, you know when you you hear about um, people in the investment world talking about when 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 the postman is is talking about his his stocks that he just invested in or he's sharing tips. You know that the market has tipped or it's it's the bubble is about to burst when everyone is suddenly an investor and a flipper and uh, and everyone's got mm. advice. And that I I I got messages during the week from people I grew up with in 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 Cove in Cork. 30 years ago asking me should they be picking up this Middleton very rare um and I said yeah if you're thirsty but like why I mean it's just madness like so all of these people are just sitting on bottles going in the hope that they're going to flip them and sell them for a profit I don't know I I collect a bit of whiskey myself but I I I can't see that I don't enjoy this side of it this flipping madness I have to tune out some of these groups it's it's too much no I think it's not even that to to be honest like it's it's more, see, when you work for a company, um, especially smaller companies and small independent companies, um, and you have a release and you're really excited about it and you release it and then it goes, it's a wee bit of pressure on them as well. It's a wee bit like, you don't want to, you don't want to disappoint people. And that's the problem. Like, um, yeah. like whenever you hear about like Brandon talking about his cologne releases, you can actually see him in the background kind of going, because oh, he, he does want it to be inclusive and everyone to get involved. So whenever people are buying his bottles and maybe buying them just to keep them, yeah, he's grateful. I like. I mean, I think every single independent small brand obviously is grateful for people buying their products, but you you don't want people to 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 buy it and just keep it. You want people to buy it and drink it as well. So that right. that's, that's the right, big yeah. thing. Well, that's one of the, the pressures that were put on the. I know in, in on the Irish whiskey side of things, as Irish whiskey started to become attractive at a premium level to to the Asian market, the super affluent Asian market, and and back when we could travel, the likes of the Middleton Distillery was getting visitors from Asia who would snap up. They'd look for the bottles with the oldest age on them, uh, and they'd snap them up. But they weren't for drinking; it was more for display and show, and maybe for storage. And the danger to a brand, of course, is that if you don't have people drinking up and down the portfolio, you you can't sell more. You you only yeah sell this one thing and you want people to go up and down the portfolio because that's what yeah. sustains the whole lot of it so i don't know it's, it's interesting drinking and get people talking like here um whenever we're on here and we're sitting sipping on a whiskey it gets people yeah. people talking about the, about the whiskey not just the brand or not just about the hype but more about actually the taste of the whiskey and, and how it's enjoyed so i just i find and as well, like as Paul does with with the whiskey club, is that he opens his bottles and get lets everyone try them, and and that's been Did incredible. Get, Barry, just to just just from my memory, just to make make sure I'm not losing my mind, one of those boxes you had at Belfast Whiskey Week was it a vintage box? It was, yeah. I I have the other one over here. I have the vintage. So didn't we do that thing from the rooftop? Remember, I was six o'clock in the morning. I was that's sipping right. Dungourney Dungourney sixty four from the roof you of my building. Dressing gown on. I did, yeah. <laughs> From the waist up. But uh, so look, I mean, a big thing about a big thing about the festival is about opening bottles, and it's about opening not just opening bottles, but it's about looking at older bottles. So you know, there's pre nineteen eighties, pre nineteen seventies tastings. We're trying to trying to pull together a pre prohibition series or prohibition period series uh, that people can taste. Oh, son, you know that, that stuff. It, that's all liquid gold. White's twenty two, yes. So hold on, that that tavern, White's White's tavern. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely you know it, 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 we want to see all these bottles opened. I don't. I, 
I don't think that, and I, I like Billy Layton. I think he's, he's spot on when, when, when anyone talks about people who work within the industry, any blender, anyone who has been in there and has created something wants people to drink it. So it's up to the, cons- it's up to the consumer to get that, to get them opened, to drink them and enjoy them. Because that's what whiskey's for. And I'm not going to tell yeah, people to it's... invest or not invest. I'm not going to tell people to flip or not to flip. But if you're a whiskey enthusiast like me, I mean, I'm an enthusiast. I'm nothing more than that. I just love it. I just want to taste it all. I want to try it all. And then I want to share it. I want to make sure that people can drink it and can have a bit of crack. Um, it's just a side effect. I think it's an unintended consequence of a growing market and a burgeoning market. Yeah. And, a market and it's that, excitement as well. It's, there's it's excitement. Too- there's hype. Yeah. And there's, you know, when, when you, you get, you like I visit like local retailers here, like a liquor store that, that I'd get my whiskeys from. And I ask them about when they're getting in a certain thing like Blue Spot and they say, well, you're the ninth person in today to talk about it. Well, what they now know is that they can probably charge more for it. And so it is a market that, look, it's market economics, isn't it? It's supply and demand. If you can get more for it, you'll charge more for it. So I think the days of getting, sadly, your 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 bargains on the premium side of Irish whiskey are, are are over, I think, for a while. But I hope it doesn't ruin the market. Like bourbon has been, oh, there's there's an there's an awful side to the bourbon market that I wouldn't want to see happen in the Irish whiskey market. There is, I mean, yeah, it's definitely the whole pappy and the whole, um, I mean, Buffalo Trace heritage stuff. You know that 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 is really negative insofar as that that stuff's great to to drink. It's absolutely brilliant to drink. But knowing that it physically comes out at a price point, and before it before it reaches the shelf, that you know that even the retailers have got to a point where they've gone, I need to do something with this. It might need to go up to uh, you know a markup of twenty, you know, to, what is it, two hundred percent, three hundred percent markup. Yeah. yeah. And that that's difficult to swallow as a consumer. Like I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't buy into that directly. I wanted to say something, Barry. Actually, just and you'd only just mentioned it before. I forgot to mention the last time I was I was chanty, but I, I forget that you're from Cove, uh, from Cork, uh, and I've been to Cove, in Cork, and and there's a football team there, Cove uh, Ramblers, no Cove Rangers. Ramblers, Cove Ramblers. There's Rangers as well, yeah. There's Rangers and Ramblers, yeah. And I played at that pitch. I sailed in. I sailed into Cove years and years ago on a tall ship. A you did not. A long time ago. Yeah. Tall ship. Yeah, I sailed in the Sir Winston Churchill tall ship. That's how old Paul is now. He used to sail. He used to he used to be on sailing ships. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know the Sir Winston that. Churchill. Yeah, the Sir Winston oh. Churchill. Yeah, yeah, I know it. That's right. So I sailed in in there, and I played it. You know, we played a wee bounce match uh, with the the crew that we had. We, we we crew from all over the world, and we played a, a wee bounce match uh, up in the pitch uh, with the team. You know, that's so, where yeah. uh, that's where Roy Keane got his start. He played for Cove Ramblers. Um, right, he was yeah. from, May- from Mayfield in Cork, and, and he his first team was Cove Ramblers before he went off to Nottingham Forest. Um, I'd say I was Cove, better than him. No he, well, he didn't come in on a sailing ship. I think he came down the train. But the <laughs> there's a connection between Belfast and Cove too, of course, is, which is the Titanic. Titanic, yeah, 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 yeah. big, big, big uh, connection. And people never, uh, never talk about it, do they? You know, it's, well, it's one you only talk about the good things. Like you talk about the good things. Oh. <laughs> Is what did they say in Belfast? She was fine when she left here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Here, stick, sticking up for it, sticking up for the people that made it. Um, listen, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of other whiskies that I want to really talk about. Like if we've got more. Well, what, plus, your tasting set. Are you going to show what's inside the tasting set tonight? No, I'm not. But you know, sorry, these tasting. So these boxes, just to give a, a glance. Um, yeah. Mm. So these boxes are like. This is the size of it now, Barry. So the size of the box is like this. It's kind of lovely. Size. Really um, lovely. And what you'll get in this box, quite specifically, although I don't have it, you know, well, I suppose it's, um, this is actually for the club, these ones, say Belfast Whiskey yep. Club on it. So these are lovely. ones that you would get. If you're a member of our club and you you live overseas or something, you would get, okay. so, you know, you've got our wee partners on there. You know, you would get these boxes, but we're using the same size. And what will be inside it is a lovely foam insert that you had the last time. Yep. Foam insert. Bottles will stand up and tall. So you can oh. fit, and in this box, you'll fit nine nine bottles in it. Uh, or you'll fit uh, six bottles, or you'll maybe fit three in a glass, or you'll fit. And we're doing it with, um, you've seen the stuff, you've seen the stuff now, you know, with the, the Cologne Cult and the, you know, Friends of Bush Mills and Friends yeah, of Eschenville. Yeah. All those different kind of groups that people are, 
are getting involved in online is to give them you know memorabilia so maybe like a glass piece of glass or you know or a pack of cards or something and it'll come in these little boxes that people can you nice. know it just makes it more accessible for people but yeah so very simple and and we made it as cheap as possible as well that's the main thing that all of those tastings that we're doing we're trying to make it as cheap as possible so i mean we want it to be as accessible as possible so there's no taking the hand out of people uh, that, that's and not, i will that's say this possible. like we, we've had conversations and and paul puts on a great event and, and and these boxes are tremendous and for some uh unknown reason paul uh, loses money on these things so that you can all drink whiskies at a, at a great rate which is i mean <laughs> both uh, from a business standpoint madness and from a kindness standpoint amazing because paul puts in so much effort and yet isn't making uh, money on it um i yeah. mean that's that's beyond no beyond but, what, and thank expected. you much for saying that because do you know what a lot of people didn't understand last year what, what what had gone on and um and i think that if anyone and i know that the amount of conversations i had with people from across the world no one was charged last year no one got charged um any delivery fee last year no one, not one person. Didn't matter where that bottle, where that box ended up. It could have been in Australia, Singapore. It could have been anywhere. No one was charged a delivery fee. No, no one. So amazing. You know, we, we 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 tried as much as possible to get that message out there. Um, this year, what we've done is we've we've condensed the the costings of the the boxes and the bottlings and condensed all of that. So then we only really have a standardised um, delivery charge, and that's really what we're right. looking at here. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. Standardised delivery charges. But hopefully, you make a bit of money on it. Sorry. Hopefully, you make hopefully you make a bit of money on it at some point, Again, so that you can you can buy other sweatshirts. Sweatshirts, not just McConnell sweatshirts, you know. <laughs> well, look, I know that some of I know that some of love that sweatshirt. Uh, we've got, love we've got, it. Uh, we've got Belfast Whiskey Week uh, sweaters and t-shirts. So if people want them, that's dead on. But I don't really care much for that. But but I know there's guys on there. Jamie Cotter's on there. He's involved with the the Belfast Whiskey Week. I know that I know that he's really caught up with Hinch, and Hinch has got legs and it's doing crazy things right now which is producing its own liquid and it's in it's in that production process just now but these guys that are involved with the the whiskey we we, we all came together at the very start of this process and said look well, it's not about money it's not about making money what it is about is making sure that people get to taste whiskey particularly irish whiskey let's get the brands and the distilleries out there and let's make it happen so they, they know that i mean these guys know that we're not there to to go make the cash but we want to, and it's the same ethos we have for Belfast Whiskey Club. The members put put into the, the club, and they get back from the club. I.e., they got lots of lovely whiskey. But that's the the ethos that we should have here. Everything that comes into Belfast Whiskey Week goes back out to people who want it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, and yes, remarkable you know, service. Yeah, to be fair, good question. Yes, you can. We have members who are not here from you know, from, 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 from Belfast and the, the Whiskey Club. And actually, anyone who takes part in Belfast Whiskey Week automatically gets a 12-month membership. They just get it. It's just part of the parcel. And the club is incredible. I, I can honestly vouch for that. I, I, don't, I don't see why clubs need to be so, you know, they don't need to be closed entities. You right, know? Yeah, and yeah. because we're all online, Barry, just now, it's so much easier, you know, to send whiskey out to people and keep them, you know, give them some. And what you're doing, without sounding really like, you know, soppy, what you're doing is so important. You know, you're giving people an out, you know, and, and I've noticed from some some of our club tastings, we start our club tasting at eight o'clock in the evening and some guys are on there until three in the morning. Not because they're... Uh, that's I think I'm one of those people. Taste, it's, it's pretty sad. They want, yeah, but they want to have that conversation. They want to have, yeah, yeah. you know... Well, yeah, we want crack. Not it's, not, it's not even that. It's like if you think about it, uh, in a in a year span of time, how many nights out do you have? How many nights out with the girls, or how many nights out do you with the guys, or just genu genuinely just go out? And very very often is like maybe twice, three times a month. And so that's what Paul does. He has those nights where you log in on a Thursday and. You, you can even bring along anyone you want. Like, so obviously, because you're locked at home, like, so there's times where I bring my partner, Andrew, in, and we just, you know, Andrew's like a member of the club now, is, is people like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so it's like, uh, and then you stay on, all the whiskeys are over. Maybe the whiskeys, it's not like rushed through where you're tasting like four or five, six whiskeys. You, 
taste them over the course of the night and there's conversation in between and it's fun. And then at the end, everyone, you know, maybe drops off if they need to drop off or stays on and has a conversation about other things and also about whiskey. So there's times I've logged off about half two, um, which, you know, you're usually coming off being like, oh, maybe waking up the next morning, you've got a bit of a hangover, but you do that normal so times. It's, it's well, let's be honest. It's not about the whiskey at the end of the day, is it? Like it's no. whiskey is the catalyst that brings the people together, but no, we, do, we don't come back. For the, we, you, you can buy the whiskey in an off license, you know, but you come back for the people and, exactly. and it's the community. And look, I see here the fact that just the, fa the fact that we're doing this every week, there's been all these little offshoots that I've loved to, I love, I love to watch happening, which is people start connecting. I just, I'm seeing it here in the comments now. People in New Jersey, New York are talking to each other about trying to meet in the Dead Rabbit in a few weeks. Brilliant. There's wow. people in the group during the week that talk about meeting for lunch in uh, Burns Pub in Columbus, Ohio for a whiskey and a, and a quick lunch. And I love it. Like, and, and it's not about the whiskey, though. They came together because of whiskey. Yeah. They mm -hmm. keep meeting because of each other and community. So the more we can do that, the better. But you're the That's one the thing catalyst. I haven't... Sorry. No, no, sorry, sir. I'm just saying, Barry, you're the catalyst of that. You know, you, you you have managed to create something very unique here. You know, lots of people coming together from different parts. As I say, lots of Americans. However, lots of people from Europe um, who are tuning in and listening. And they are fascinated by what's being said. And you're you're inviting on brands, giving the brands the, the, the chance to talk about their product. But I say a lot of people in here, they're listening to that. They're getting that. You know what? They're like, I'll go the, I'll go the, the off license. If I can get it, I'll get it. But they're coming on here because they want to like exchange ideas, chat with people, gain more knowledge. They want all of that stuff, you know. So they're doing they're doing a hell of a lot. Really impressed with it. Uh, and and yeah, I would actually think though, Barry, you would enjoy our whiskey club nights because we we drink some most nights. I'll join up. There's a Barry, you should come in one night. Come in one night for the group. Well, I'll see. join. I'll join. I joined um during the week. I joined Cork Cork Whiskey Club um Sorry. last week. So I might as well join you as well and just support from afar. And then, yeah, rope me in. I'll join in, sit in, have a few sips. I'd love it. I'll, yeah. send, I'll send you a box. You might have to be, of... like, stay up like me in a, in a strange hour of the day or something. But <laughs> Probably early for me. Probably 11 o'clock in the morning for me. Yeah, like. That's it. <laughs> Drink at 11 o'clock in the morning. That would be great. So I was on a tasting this morning for at half 11 for the Palace Bar for their box that they did. So at half 11, I'm sipping on Blue Spot and Green Spot Palace Bar. I mean, that's wow. the that's the, the downside of living in, on the West Coast of America is the time zones. But sure, you make the most uh, of the it. The downside? Is that a downside, though? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. It's the, the only downside. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the sunshine helps, doesn't it? The sunshine helps. Yeah, we had a foot, a foot of sun there now today. Good foot of sun. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've actually seen that. that that's one of the things that honestly I'm so excited about uh, is future and uh, travel and being able to go places because I'll have to say I've never actually been to the US at all and there's obviously a lot to explore and being a brand ambassador for McConnell's a gen cannot wait to Come get to all story. of the different places you yeah. can go like even you talking about the dead rabbit there never been really want to go I don't know why I've never traveled. Um, actually, do you know why I've never traveled? I have a, I have a, a six-year-old little girl, and you oh. know, I've been a mom, been a mom for maybe most of my twenties, and maybe that's why I haven't traveled. But so excited about actually getting getting across and seeing and and seeing seeing everything. And she's always there to look after herself. So you can travel. She's six now. She can make dinner and she can make a cup of tea like your grand. She can come with me. It's really, it's difficult. It's one of those things where it's like, young kids are, Paul will tell you, he's got, he's got a bridge. <laughs> they're difficult when they're, when they're small, but whenever they're a little bit older, they go, and my little girl is six, but coming seven, but actually coming 27, you know, she would buy and sell me any day and like, would be buzzing to travel with me anywhere. <laughs> anywhere so. Have you kids, Paul? Have you, have you, yeah, have you, have you got kids? I've got three kids, so my oldest is six, Wait. and then four, and then two. But my Jeez. my six year old, I was I was showing the I was showing the um, the guys in the whiskey club. I was showing a video my my daughter made her first ever YouTube video the other day. Um, it was hilarious. She thought she was uh, she thought she was uh, selling makeup to someone. So, so she cute. was like, "Look at these nails! Look from it's from Walmart." I was like, "What Walmart? We don't have Walmart here." Do you remember yeah. that muck? Where'd you get that from? YouTube. Um, 
but here, kids, kids are oh, kids are great crack. But uh, yeah, I mean, they would be they're actually fascinated with whiskey, like fascinated in so far as they're like, you're doing whiskey again. I'm like, yeah, yeah. no, you're not. <laughs> the youngest one who's two makes it. Her her thing is no, daddy, no whiskey, not not to, no, no whiskey. And I'm like, what? I'm not doing it. And she's like, not tonight, no whiskey tonight. I'm like. Or if I drive <laughs> round the country, so I would drive round the country dropping off um, our, our whiskey club tastings, and uh, so I don't use the postal service. I literally drive to people's doors and drop them off at the door, and um, they know if I'm going out, they're like, "You, you off whiskey delivery?" I, mean, I get caught on. I can't. I know, Part of your life now. Like... The kids know. So it's so inquisitive. It's something they're not. They're not allowed in, and that's that's the thing. Yeah. Like Emily, with Emily says to me all the time, like. I, I told my teachers today that, you know, you do whiskey. And I was like, what do you mean, you do whiskey? And she was like, I told her you do whiskey. And I was like, right, okay, that's great. But like, her, uh, actually, the school, the school that, um, like, so she's six, goes to a local school in Belfast, just so happens that, you know, like, Jarvis from Eklundville, his wife teaches in, in my daughter's school. That's how, this is how close knit. Belfast and and in the Northern Ireland community, it is like, isn't it incredible? It's so small, isn't it? It's wild. Connor Windows. <laughs> Connor Windows. Hi, that's brilliant. His six year old asked him during the week what his favorite whiskey was and why he needed to buy so much. <laughs> brilliant. The kids are watching. Yeah. New hash. The kids are watching. They don't. They don't know what it is, but at the same time, Emily thinks it's so cool because she's like, oh my god, whiskey. Whereas. Previously, before that, it was like she had no like, no clue what I did. She had no clue yeah. exactly what, what I did. Asking now, insurance. Getting insurance quotes off, you know. There was one time she asked me what it was, and I said, um, "This was my this was my explanation, which is terrible." It was like, "So, um, do you know the way if you have like a building and if it burns down?" She said, "Right." I said, "Well, I just give you the money to build it back up again." <laughs> So now you can tie it into your story. Now you can say, do you remember when McConnell's distillery burned down in 1909? Well, I would have helped rebuild it. Yeah, I give the money to them to build it up again, and now I work for them, you know, which <laughs> is not the truth, but you can stretch the truth, you know. Kieran Quinn's, Kieran Quinn's comment in there is absolutely hilarious. He says that his six-year-old knows Barry better than his own online teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely quick. That's priceless. There, there seems to be some mention of Barry in the household, right? You must be coming a household. You, you're becoming a household name in certain, you know, in certain, uh, in certain parts here, Barry, because you know. Followed by that expletive, yeah, Barry. You're, you're doing really well. There's a lot of people that are interested in what you you have to say. So, mm -hmm. uh, no, you, you're you're definitely flying. That's why, like, I, I'm not even. I'm the same, like, because it's, it's not it. Like, I'm not trying to be cheesy or anything, but I was buzzing whenever you messaged me and asked me to come on because I, I watch that all the time. I listen yeah. to, I don't okay. maybe watch it live because you, I told you I'm really terrible at night time, but I, wa I do watch it because I spend a lot of time alone, especially whenever you're working from home and you're working in your home office and you, you just put, maybe put on YouTube or you put on Spotify and you, you listen to podcasts or you listen to YouTube. Yeah. And you you start to hear your voice so often that it's like you can't imagine yourself actually being on the show. As the community that makes it, it's just a great community here, like and just good people. And all I do is press play and record, and and off we go. Like and everyone else does the hard work. But uh, yeah, look, it's it, honestly it's great. We couldn't do this without the great people. And, and my personal privilege is that I get to talk to fun in people that I just wouldn't meet otherwise. Like I've made more friends in the last four years than I made in the first. 36 years of my life, you know, like, and they've all been through this thing called whiskey, which honestly, you could take the whiskey away. And, and as long as I could keep the friends, I'd be happy. So as long as we can keep doing that, the more golden. Do you know, someone, uh, someone said to me, they were going to tune in tonight to watch your show. And I, I was like, that's brilliant. I'm tuning in tonight just for this, just and only just for the subtitles. <laughs> huh. now, I know no, Facebook, honestly, Facebook, your Facebook subtitles Facebook, the other Facebook, night. No, can I just, can I have like two minutes to talk about the subtitles that were on? Please. So obviously, uh, Paul, I was speaking to Brendan the other night uh, about Belfast Whiskey Week next year. Those subtitles were incredible. It was talking about naked whiskey. It was, it, like, it was talking about like 
what was it? There was something about notes in the whiskey, and it was like disgusting notes. It, it, it came up the way they were talking. So Paul's got his sort of like Scottish accent, but it's a little bit tainted by by the Northern Irish accent. And then you got Brandon's accent, which is like incredible. Listen to Brandon, and I can understand every word that Brandon says, but obviously the subtitles cannot understand what Brandon is saying because <laughs> he was coming up things that were making me laugh out loud, like laugh out loud. It's just, Watch it back. Is it on? Is it on your YouTube? Paul? It, it pops up. It comes on back on onto the. It's on. Yeah, it's on on the YouTube. Channel. But is the subtitles on YouTube? But it's yeah. It's but yeah. But it's because of Facebook. I mean, Facebook have this now inbuilt. You know, it's just, I don't know how to remove it. it is no, hilarious. keep it on. So, keep it. Keep the subtitles. I, I, I Hashtag keep it. the subtitles. It's actually a translator he has employed that lives in a spare bedroom in his house, just like typing. Every time he's so on he's video, they're just like. <laughs> he's got bored, <laughs> so he's starting to type. What was it? Someone actually wrote underneath it, like, naked whiskey. That's what I want. But it was something about he had said something that sounded like naked, but it was not naked, obviously. <laughs> naked pot still. Something about naked pot still. Hilarious. Naked whiskey. Absolutely. <laughs> Some of these Tell me this. Oh, yeah, these comments. Listen, uh, and, and again, I, I don't want any attention on this direction, but I'd rather keep it on the whiskey and yourselves. But the. Um, love your is, turtleneck. It loves your, they all love your turtleneck, don't they? They love uh, it. You, you need a brand, you know? You need, you need to. Uh, when, market when, yourself. When, when people realize that I have no formal education or any skills to speak of, I need to have both an accent and a turtleneck, and that'll carry <laughs> me through. <laughs> you should definitely do you know what you could do? That, that looks like that actually looks like a knitted one. Is that knitted? Yeah, this is it's a newer one. Yeah, this is kind of knitted. Yeah, look. well, I like that. Yeah, I like this that. is kind of a I've, I've now got it's six cable, turtlenecks. Cable knit, cable knit turtle, yeah, turtleneck. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Cool. You know, so yeah, but like, I, I, try wearing these in San Diego, like in the middle of the summer, summer when it's thirty-five <laughs> degrees, and I'm sitting here and I'm sweating like buckets, and people are like, "Good man for the turtleneck, well done, yeah, great, to see the turtleneck again," and it's unreal. <laughs> I can't oh. wait for you know the you know the sort of um, like tiny tissue net or you know like the little fish net turtleneck you're gonna wear <laughs> during the summertime. <laughs> Lacy turtleneck. Wore, the last time I wore a turtleneck. So the last time I wore a top neck was a white, it was pure white. And it oh, was that, yeah, it was that really thin, you know, material. Yeah, but it was like a, yeah, white. And I wore it with a white pair of like um, nearly PVC, like PVC, they weren't, they weren't leather, but like white PVC trousers. And I had glue what? sticks. That's the last time that I had a white or a turtleneck on. White turtleneck, glue sticks, and a, and a, I think it was like an under 18s rave, you know? Was this in your sailing ship days? Was this when you sailed into coal is... on, on, uh, on the Winston Churchill? <laughs> well, that's the strangest outfit I've ever heard. A cable knit, a cable yeah. knit polar neck and a pair of PVC yeah. trousers and a glow stick. Yeah. Glow stick. I, I was watching um I was watching oh. the Sopranos during the week and they have they have great fashion style, you know, the Italian men in the nineteen nineties in New Jersey and Paulie, one of the characters, has a fantastic turtleneck that's actually a short sleeve turtleneck. So I think I'm gonna bring that back for the hot summer months where I'll have <laughs> Oh uh, the, turp, the neck will be covered, but it'll be like short sleeved. I think I'm going to try and bring that back. You should have a, a summer berry and a winter berry. So you should have <laughs> maybe a V neck for the summer berry and a turtleneck for the winter berry. And have a cut off. <laughs> have a cut off. <laughs> the problem is, I don't, know, I don't know anyone else that wears a turtleneck. So I don't know anyone either. You are unique. Do you know how it started? I'll tell you how it started. Here's how it started. You're getting the exclusive here now on it. It actually started for Whiskey Live last year. And I was in Cork before I went up to Dublin last year for Whiskey Live and, which is what, no, 2019 now. And I was in Gentleman's Quarters in Patrick Street in Cork and I wanted to get a new jacket. And I'm in there on my own. And, you know, us men, we need a woman to tell us what to wear because we don't have any fashion sense whatsoever. So I said, hey, you know, could you, it was a, a lovely girl working there. And I said, look, could you pick me out a nice shirt for a nice jacket? And she, took one look at me and she said do you ever try a turtleneck and i said no 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 i said no 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 i said white shirt and a navy blazer would be fine and she said i'll bring you two turtlenecks best cork i'll bring you two turtlenecks there now you try them on so she brought up two turtlenecks tried them on with the jacket took a photograph sent it to herself i said what do you think she said yeah turtleneck it is 
and that's it. That's how it started. Up to right. Whiskey Live. Rolled we need into to write Live. her a letter. Write her a letter, Barry. You need to <laughs> write her a letter and tell her, Amen. like you yeah. have claim to fame. Uh, listen, this is, this, is, this is all fun and games. But listen, it is 20 past two in the morning now in Ireland. Here's okay. the question for you. Uh, you know, this is typically the time of the night when the audience starts getting agitated and worrying and wondering, will there be anything musical to sing us out at all at the end of a night? Like, And this is where we go, go ahead, to Sarah, go Sarah Froze. She's like, oh God, oh God, are people going to ask me to sing? <laughs> No, it's not even that. It's the fact that um, I cannot sing. Like, I'm, I won't lie and tell you. There's so many people over the years who said, you and your sisters would be, like, famous if you could sing. And I'm like, but we can't. It just doesn't could, happen. Could you rap? Could you like a rap or something? Is there some kind of, like, no. slim shady or... No, I'm, no. Ar I'm artistic. I like to draw, and I, I'm artistic with my mind, but I'm not vocal cannot sing cannot play instruments just nope do you have a Wish poem could. do you have like a favorite irish poem or something or uh geez we, we a few weeks ago here now we had the two lads from uh the shite talk history podcast which was great fun and at the end of the night the two lads god love them they weren't used to drinking whiskey for three hours and by the end of the night they were almost horizontal and i asked them for a song and the two of them gave me a poem <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, lads, I said a song, <laughs> and they gave me a poem. But it was great, because they gave me a lovely Seamus Heaney poem and a Patrick Kavanagh poem. Um, but a they toast. Were prepared. That's the most prepared I've ever heard in my life, because, honestly, this is, this is, uh, I, I'm not artistic, and I, I, I did, <laughs> I did says, maybe, I did a G GCSE drama, but I, I'm not going to do a, a, a drama improv improvisation. But maybe something I, from like Shakespeare, something from King Lear, maybe, or uh, Othello would would uh, would please our audience. <laughs> Draw Paul, a song can you now. Sing? Oh, come on, it's your time to shine. I'm not a great yeah. singer, right? But I will but, happily but. sing one song. I, yeah. I, I was trying to find the lyrics there. Save me. I, I, I was finding the lyrics, and I, I'm going to try and sing one song. And obviously, there's no music. I mean, there's no music. Obviously. You know what I mean? So it's purely a cappella. I mean, it's. <clears throat> Okay, so wet, 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 yes, we're going to go with Gypsy Girl from the, the album uh, Picture This, yeah? <laughs> I have nothing prepared, but I'm going to go from the album Gypsy Girl. <laughs> Do you know, can I just say, can I just say, like, wet, 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 not even joking, and not to play on, play on anyone heart strings, but one of my dad's favourite bands, and my dad passed in, in January, so Paul, take it away, love it. Sure. Keep it coming, sing your heart out. Okay, you can count me in. No, I don't even. I, I'm on screen myself, right? That's, no, put me there, Barry. Just do it. Put me there. Go for it. Do you want to go back full screen? I don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to. We want to. We want to see the, the passion in your eyes. Ten years before my time, I sang a song about a friend of mine, about a girl working for a dime. I didn't know that gypsy girl, but I knew about a can through. I love that she is always up for sale. Ooh, picture this. Well, I was alone. When I fell in love, I was alone. When my gypsy girl, gypsy lady, lost her soul. She's so scared of growing old. The words that don't come for me to turn to gold. Gypsy girl with raven hair, eyes like saucers with a stare. And she says that one. Never seems to care. Ooh, picture this. Well, I was alone. But when I fell in love, I'm not alone. With my gypsy girl. Sha la 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 la. Sha la 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 la. I know. Yeah. Good. Yes. I kind of, some of the lyrics might Paul, I have a new time. Respect for you. Okay. Awesome. Love it. Listen, I, I love when people commit. You committed. You went for it. Sure, you went for not? it. Here, honestly, genuinely, always, Listen. always loved you, but newfound love, awesome, love it. Amazing, amazing. And and next up now is either Sarah or Jer Garland, who's in the audience, who has committed Sarah to a Gal. song. Yes, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Jer, Jer no. has been doing tasting since uh, since for the last twelve hours. He was on the Palace Bar tasting with me eleven hours ago, and he's still going. He must have a song in him at this stage. 
he's he's uh, let him he's on, good. let him sing. He's good for it, isn't he? Jared is good for it. He is. Jared, Jared, was it? What did you give us a rendition of when you came on? Was it a uh, Raglan Road? I can't remember. Um, but Jared gave us a song when he when we did the Blue Spot tasting. Barry, see <laughs> some of the singers you've had on, actual real singers. You know, people yeah. who can really sing. Uh, they have been absolutely from that. <laughs> we'll have a few more on now in the next few weeks. We'll bring back a few yeah. and we'll have some new singers. And I'm trying to, like, there's, you know, when you do this every week and you try and bring in three whiskeys every week, there's only so many whiskeys you can do without repeating and so many guests. And so what I want to do is, it, it's, you know, a lock-in is about more than the whiskey, isn't it? It's about songs and it's about stories. So I'll bring in storytellers and yeah. and, and and just have the crack with people. Like, I loved our, our night with the lads from the Shite Talk podcast because those were just legends. Those, like, Irish comedians were just legends. And I think those are the great nights you have as well. So we'll do more of that crack. And see some of the music as well. Like, uh, um, even the music here locally in Belfast, some of the trad music and some of the singers here are incredible. Like, I I... I remember growing up, um, maybe when I was in university, I had a one of one of my best friends was a girl called Claire Lochran, and her whole family was musical. Like from I actually think did Stephen Lochran do some music at at the Belfast Whiskey Club or well they're they're, they're honestly they're her, her and her brothers are incredible for music and they spoke fluent Irish played every instrument under the sun and sang. And I sat there with my arms folded at the trad sessions being like, I am so untalented. I cannot cope with my life right now. That's what it is. Some some people in Belfast and some people in Ireland are just incredibly talented musically. And I'm just not one of them. Some people, have the, some people have, the, have the gift for it. And I will say this, if there's anybody in the audience, and I'm not looking just particularly at Jerk Garland, who's on the edge of his seat warming up his guitar, but if there's anybody who wants to sing a song, <laughs> Bring you, I'll bring you on. I'll send you a link and you can join for an old tune. Uh, the, the floor is yours. <laughs> Begging for the best musicians out there. That's what, that's exactly. There's bound to be someone and all those beautiful people that you have there. There's bound to be someone that can sing. Bound to be. Uh, to there, there is incredible musicians. I wish I had a, like, if you had a told me, I'd have got someone on because, see, especially working in, in Belfast and in some of the, the pubs whenever, um, years ago like i worked in a bar called filthy mcnasties and honestly there was like there's a guy called pete wallace he was on and yeah. he do you know Pete Wallace? no no well, no, no, no anyway just... there was a guy there was a guy that was on called called pete you may not know him but he was incredible and his voice was insane like and he played he still plays now he actually played the odyssey he's quite well known and you know the amount of artists that you see whenever you're working in in Irish, but especially in like not like a nightclub or or a a bar where you're having lots of people, but more like a front bar somewhere where it's like more of a speakeasy bar. Some of the artists that you see is are, are, are amazing. I know, I know. Well, sure. Next time, like um, maybe we can do a another Belfast stream where we bring in a few musicians. Maybe we should tie something into the uh, the old uh, Belfast Whiskey Week and the festival, Paul, where like we bring in a few welcome. musicians. You're, we'll do like a simulcast. Than, yeah, you're probably really good. You're more than welcome to do that. Um, 100%. Do you know, f funnily enough, I was I was thinking about that there in terms of the musicians we had. We, we for the festival, I made a, a clear attempt to understand that a lot of our comedians, a lot of our musicians were getting no work in the summer. In fact, they've still not had any work. So I put it, yeah. you know, to task that I would get as many musicians and uh, bands, you know, from from across the whole of Ireland. It wasn't just from from Belfast, but I was having people coming from, uh, from you know, from from down south, uh, Letterkenny, a couple of other places to come to Belfast to mm -hmm. do recordings for the festival. And yeah, we'll do the same again because we still are in the position where these guys have not had any work. These people have not had any way to make any income. And so I, I want to support, and I have been doing yeah. that. I've been supporting local acts, um, you know, f you know, paying them to to, to do it. Yeah. I don't believe in and 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 get them to do it for for nothing. These guys would normally yeah. be in a bar at the weekend, and they'd normally be singing, you know, for for, for I know for, 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 they're for they're really struggling, like yeah. you know, the, who people whose livelihoods depended on it, uh, depended mm -hmm. on being in a pub and singing. And it's a question we get asked here in Lock in a few times is why don't we put up a tip jar for our musicians? And I'm not sure if everyone knows about we've shared in the past, but all the musicians that play in the lock in are paid the same as if they were in a pub. So we ask them for their Excellent. rate. 
what would they so, charge if they were in a pub and we pay them 100%. I'll pay them um, for their time. It's be fair. On. It's only that's fair. You know, yeah. Spot on because that's what you, you know, that, that, that's how I feel that, that that's exactly what should happen. And, you know, and we, you know, to trying to support those people who, who are in that position. Similar enough, I look at that with the whiskey and I look at all those very small distillers that are coming through and all those people with smaller kind of budgets behind them. I like to try yeah. and give as much back and support them as much as possible. But no, that's really, do you know what, Barry? That's a lovely thing to do. And I'm glad that you're doing something like that because it, it, that, that means a lot to me, just knowing that, that those people coming on are, uh, are being treated like that. It's absolutely brilliant. Hi, yeah, I'll I'll because I'll, I'll, a lot of the musicians here and and DJs as well, because like, there's a lot of uh, local Belfast mm -hmm. DJs. And... Um, you see some of the stuff they like they have been going for years and years and this pandemic is is affected so many people um like a sucker punch because mm. you would never have expected you couldn't even plan for it like and i as i said previously i worked in insurance it's not something that you could have planned for even if you were uh, um knowledgeable about risk and what what could happen so there's, there's just people who have like dedicated their whole lives to music and to um, to being a DJ and to work in, in the industry and the bar industry and entertainment and, and not even just like uh, small scale, large scale. And you know, the, you know, even the entertainment industry where you have events, like the events industry, not even just yeah. uh, concerts or, uh, but like as what Paul did, and you adjusted really, really well, Paul. You know, you you brought the the Belfast Biscuit Week virtual, but not everyone was able to do that because, you know, you worked really quickly and you got you got it sorted. But not everyone was able to do that, and not everyone got on board with that or was equipped to be able to do that either. You know, Martin's asking a good question. A group travel for Belfast with me. <clears throat> That's interesting. There's there, there's two things. One. Our, our main partner for Belfast Whiskey Week is a company called the Hastings Hotel Group. So big hotel group uh, within Northern Ireland. Um, they, they own the most amount of luxury star uh, hotels that we have here in Northern Ireland. Lovely, lovely hotels. Generally, Europa, um, Grand Central. These are central based within the city centre. And then you've got lots just on the outskirts. So you've got Stormont, you've got Culloden, down to... Um, you know, down to Newcastle, down to the Sleeve Donard. Um, now, that that hotel group will offer specifically for that week hotel discounts. You know, for for rooms, not a bother. That that will be you know that will be evident. We were when we thought we might be opening up a little bit sooner, and maybe having a lot more people uh, having specific tours coming from the states, Germany, India. Um, those three countries and potentially Australia that people were going to come over for the summer. Now, that's not to say that won't happen, but we're not going to know what those restrictions are going to look like. I have a inside insider knowledge that um, the quarantine restrictions to come into the UK will probably last now until at least September. Now, that would suggest that actually that could cause you a lot of difficulties try to get here. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you'd have to quarantine yourself. Now, could you quarantine yourself in a in a pub with uh you know with with shared loads of whiskey for Belfast whiskey? I'm not sure, but it, it is a difficult it's a difficult time. What I would say is years going forward, a hundred percent. You know the idea is that we bring people to Belfast. We want people to come to Belfast, um, and we we want that to happen. So yes, group travel, yes. But if you're in if you're in the the south and you need a, a holiday and you want to come to Belfast, those rooms will be made available. Um, you know, with discounted rates. Similarly, if you're going to take the risk, then let us know in advance. You know, we'll give you. You know, those codes will be gone out for people who are buying tasting packs, and they can purchase. You know, they can go on and use the codes to book hotel rooms. We'd also say that there was a deal in the pipeline potentially if you were to book a hotel room, um, that you were maybe then invited to certain tastings, um, as part of your hotel room. So that's still something that has been. Is, is just being tweaked out. So, big good question. Big good question. Lads, I'm on the fourth whiskey now before we wrap up. I'm on the fourth whiskey. You're fourth. that big boy. I'm almost at the end of this beautiful red breast, 30 year old, all port, um, single cask, only 444 bottles. 
I wish all 444 were in my belly, but they're not. Um, this is the look at look at the color on this. It's quality. Yeah. It's quality. Look at that. Just like Guys, like leather. Your camera is incredible, by the way. You yeah. Did that in that camera. Yeah, lights and cameras there were a big were a big uh, step up. All right, in the quality. Um, I found the webcam was just not cutting it. He's uh, it makes for a very busy apartment though. Like we live in a, a very small like loft apartment <laughs> where. I have a very understanding wife, like who, uh, pre who <laughs> this, this takes up half the apartment on a Friday night. Like, I'm just going to have a, I'm going to have a two stacks. Good man. I'm doing, I'm doing the uh, cologne. I'm doing the oatmeal. Oh, I lovely! Do this, but it's one of my faves. So. We just launch it. You listen. You've been unreal tonight. Like this, is great crack. Will we do this again? Like, yeah. I and hopefully to. in person, how much fun will it be? Because I keep saying this to people, I think I've said it now for a year and I'm getting exhausted saying it, but let's do it in real life. I, I have, I, this pandemic um, cause, kind of, causes all kinds of uh, havoc with your brain and like, how do you meet people anymore? Mm. And how do you, like, now if I meet somebody in public, I don't know how to deal with them anymore. Like, I'm like my, raising my hands and where do you put your hand? <laughs> talk anymore. It's like, what it's do very you do? Strange. It's like, <laughs> Put the shoulder forward. I don't know you because can't, you can't cuddle people. You can't cuddle. No. You can't embrace no. people. No. Paulo, I said, Paul, the other oh. night, whenever you came to the house to deliver whiskeys and you were wearing a full scale gear, like gear. Paul is like Bane, like Bane from Batman. He does not come with a mask on, he comes with a <laughs> gas mask. Shield. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to shy away from the fact that I try to protect myself, everyone else, no, my family. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not embarrassing. I'm not trying no, to embarrass no, you. I'm no. just like you are. No. Full, like from the day one, I remember. Um, so Andrew knows my partner. Andrew knows Paul really well, and he met him in the cloth here in Belfast not too long. Like, not even the pandemic hadn't actually properly kicked in, but it was on the cards. It was like sort of early March time, and. Paul came in his rubber gloves and his mask, and Andrew came back and was like, "Paul was wearing a mask. Like, that's cr that's that's whoa, that's <laughs> a lot, right?" But like a real mask, like that is not whoa. That is not whoa because obviously everything started to turn into real pandemic stage where everyone was wearing a mask. So Paul was wearing a mask before it was fashionable. Is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, I wore I, 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 hipster enough, Paul. Funnily enough, I was at a taste and. I was at I was at a tasting in beginning of February time. I was at a tasting, and uh, and, and I wasn't. I had my gloves with me. I had my mask with me. And this is before anyone's even talking about it. And guys went to shake friends of mine. No guys went to shake my hand, and I went, "I'm not touching you." And they're like, "What? Yeah. What do you mean?" So I'm not yeah. touching you. You don't understand what's going on here. You don't. You're not going to understand this until it's you know in your face. Yeah. Oh, you're you know you're a mental people. So I was having a conversation just last week, and one of the guys was reminding me. He's like, "You told me this was happening, and I and I I ridiculed you, ridiculed you." And I was like, "Listen, I'm, and I, I don't say I told you so because that's that's bollocks." But what I would say is, "Listen, we should have we should have been better prepared," and I mean that as a whole society, as everybody, we should have been better prepared, and we just haven't been. You know, I know, I know, and it's and Look. for every here for everyone that's lost their life on this bollocks. I, I, I am saddened by all of that. Continuously but I think with you, with you, Paul, the, the biggest like shock to me was because whenever I met you, you're Mr. Social. Like you love to be out. You love like hugs and embraces and you're like very much like the guy who, who wants to be social. So yeah. Yeah. To, to see someone who's like that, like, and, and that's the thing, you, you, were, you were shocked yeah. at the start, but it, it makes sense yeah. People wondering what does my wife drink? Um, she likes. <laughs> well, also, what size are my shoes? What's my social security number? Um, my wife <laughs> likes to drink. Um, she likes peated whiskies. She likes um, Connemara. She? she does. Yeah, she likes um, Port Charlotte. She likes. Um, yeah, she likes Scotch. She likes peated Irish. She likes Bushmills Twenty One. Oh yeah, yeah. She drink a bit of cask drink. Where did she get her? Have you had her on here yet? Yeah. She won't come on. She won't come yeah. on. No. She's the uh, the brains behind the operation, rather than the uh, the idiot in front of them. Yeah. 
Oh, she's yeah. fair, right. play, fair play to her. Fair play. Yeah, you, know, do you know, next month is International Female Day or Women's Day. And, uh, you know, I think it's a, a, a massive thing. Not that it's like the be all and end all, but women and whiskey is something yes. that is incredible. Percent. And something 100%. I love to, love to talk about because um, the more females there are in whiskey, the better the conversation is because it's more everyone gets involved. And it's not, it's like, and I'm not trying to say that the whiskey yeah. industry is dominated by, by males or in a it negative is, way. It is. Just, yeah. it is, but it's, you, you know. just need to get more females on board. Um, you, you, because I, I still get a, a, an odd look whenever I say to people that I'm a, a whiskey brand ambassador. People are like, do you drink whiskey? And I'm like, yeah, I do drink whiskey. And it's almost a shock to people. So it is good to get more females involved in the industry. If there are others in the industry, like other females in the whiskey world that I might not know about, be familiar with, like I'd love an introduction. Like I, the lock-in, the goal for 2021 is that it's at least 50% female on the lock-in you know, over the course of the year. And we, we're, we're making a concerted effort to try and involve more people who are in the whiskey world because this can be a very white male dominated industry. And I hate to tune into live streams that are just four or five middle-aged white men talking about whiskey. I just don't think it's reflective of the world. And so the more diversity we can bring in here, the better. No, yeah. Spot, spot on. Here, here in, in, in the North, like, do, have you met uh, Lauren from Bushmills as well? Like she's, she's a great girl. Like I'd love to get her on. Yeah. I, I've, you know, I've never I've actually her. like met her personally, which is awful when you think about it. Like, but, I've connected with her a lot um, virtually. I'll try, and her, I'll try and get her on because I've got her, the whiskies that she's been part of for the Causeway collection, taking up a whole shelf behind me. So that would yeah. be great. She's good, she's good banter, Barry. She is, she is good. She? Crack. Yeah, 100%. And, mm -hmm. you know, phys done a lot of physical tastings with her. Um, you know, she, she definitely is great. I'm just looking at, is it John Doyle it made up a comment there. He said, how will Paul and Sarah react to people saying they met them over Facebook? I, I, how do, how do I, I think it's great. I don't mind that people have met me only virtually. <laughs> I don't mind that. I, I, I just would love to meet everyone physically. I, I think I, I have a connection. I think I always like that. I, like, I just like to be in, in company of people. And you know what? This has been good so far, you know, in terms of the, the internet has yeah. been great. It's allowed us to do all these kind of uh, virtual stuff, but, there's nothing, am I right in saying this, Barry? It's just nothing better than oh, yeah. like looking someone in the eyes, knowing what they're about, understanding them, even smelling them, even uh, you yeah. know, physically feeling them without yeah, you know, yeah. without, with, without encroaching, you know, it's just that's that's just that's just that's as a human being, that's how I feel about humanity. I want that. We want we long that. for the day when we're all in the same room and I long for the day when the lock in here is irrelevant because we're all doing it in person. So that like yeah. let's let's make the lock in irrelevant. Like that that needs to be our goal, you know? Uh because we're all in person in pubs, shaking hands and hugging and kissing. But that's that's uh, it. Like I was saying I was saying to Barry the, the other day when whenever I caught up with him that um most most of my journey uh in my job is being virtual and that is because of the pandemic. But there has been the odd like handful of people who I've met during um, during lockdown, and that's been because you know like loosens of lockdowns and people who are living close by, and the people who have met me have nearly been shocked by the fact that you know I'm t a tall girl. Like people don't understand. People are kind of shocked. That I'm five foot ten, and they're like, they meet me, in, and you can see it in their face. They 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 don't expect it. They maybe just think of me as you know like an average girl who's maybe like five foot six and then when they see me it's like and there's there's also times whenever I wear heels and maybe I'm maybe like six <laughs> one in heels and they're like what is going on who you? <laughs> that's because we thought you were Instagram size we thought you were like square shape like <laughs> you thought I was this boring, size boring, like. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see it, it it like it you can read it on people's faces because everyone knows what my face looks like but they know that <laughs> no one actually look, knows what I look like whenever they're standing in front of me so it's quite you funny. Need to stand next to a stand next to a penny for scale so that we know your size I've never yeah. heard that before. Instagram size. I think that's that's is that that must be a new phrase now, Barry. You should coin that. 
Instagram, <laughs> Instagram size is absolutely brilliant. It's just, just like, yeah, just like four one inch by one inch. Yeah, you're just brilliant. you're Meg TV from um, Willy Wonka. You know, you just like. <laughs> Absolutely. People are surprised to learn like that I'm I'm only four foot ten. Like I'm very small. Like I'm <laughs> people are shocked to learn that. <laughs> yeah, you're 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 five five foot five foot nine, ten? No, I'm I'm just, just a shade under six foot. A shade yeah, you, under six do you wear the turtleneck to make you look longer, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I wear um, neck. I wear stripes to make me look taller as, as much as possible. Um try and get me over that six foot line, you know. But the, Whenever but I, I first not, meet you, Barry, I'll, I'll, I'll not wear heels. I'll stick my DMs <laughs> on and, and meet you. Because you don't want to meet me when I'm wearing my heels because it's quite scary. I'm not intimidated by powerful people. And I, I encourage you to own your own your power and live your but power. I have a friendly face. And then whenever I turn up, I'm like, this person is like, whoa, what are you doing? Just, just pat me on the head. Nice to meet you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're calling you leprechaun. They're all calling you leprechaun. These people in the chat. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, Vince, you're taller than that. You're taller. He thinks I look at. I look at least four eleven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to be very small though. When I was younger, I was very small. I suppose we all were. But <laughs> I was. I was tiny. I was so small. So I was such a small child, and then I, I got to like fifteen, and then I just stretched like so long. It was taller size. than all the boys in the, in the world. What age were you when you stretched? I was 14. And then I came back from school, like going to my GCSE year, and all the boys were smaller than me. And it was it was tough, not going to lie. Just tell yeah. me. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. a tough time. It was, it was terrible. I hated being tall for such a long time until I realized that, you know, being tall is awesome. <laughs> and my little girl is, what are you laughing at, Paul? <laughs> I think he's laughing at the fact that we, we, I said we were all small once. Like we were, we were all small once. <laughs> we were all small when we were younger. Like that's both true, and just very true, you know. <laughs> unless you walked out of the <laughs> womb, <laughs> unless you walked, unless you sauntered out of your uh, out of the womb, which would be dangerous. <laughs> I was also uh, small. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm big in uh, big in Japan. <laughs> I'm big in Japan. Bad. Oh, absolutely bad. Oh, listen to me. I'll right, tell you so something. I'm always going to ask a quick question. Um, Go on. The, uh, with the the bar, with the bar, or oh, with the bars, but the off license, the setup, but which we which you have. This is a quite a serious question about the states. Um, is there? I mean. Before lockdown, I just I, I, you know wasn't hundred percent sure, but you had organised meetings. Had you organised meetings before? Is that something that is on your radar to maybe do for your for your audience in the states to have little meetups? Is that something you're going to do? Make a physical appearance? Yeah. So a lot of the community that we have today grew out of Ohio, and when I was living in Ohio, um, like we moved out to San Diego last year, just at the start of the pandemic, and in California, when I was in Ohio was very lucky to connect with the Irish distillers distributor, Southern Glazers, who are the distributor in Ohio. And they kind of saw that I was doing these fundraising tastings. Like I do these um, fundraising events for uh, cancer research with Irish whiskey. And I didn't know much about Irish whiskey, but if you give people a drink, they'll pay money. And I just donated it all to, to this cancer research charity. And the, the distributor saw that I was doing these and they got in touch with me and asked me if maybe I'd have interest in doing more things with them and seeing as I was an Irishman in Ohio. And so I just started learning more about Irish whiskey and getting into it. And they helped me put on events. So they would support me and they'd supply all the whiskeys and it just turned into a, a great set of events. And that's really what grew the community was like anyone who's in Ohio can probably trace their, their connection in this community back to one of those events, uh, or they know somebody who was at one of those events. Uh, and then sadly that of course had to stop March, 2020, March, 2020 was the last event we did in person and we did it in Cleveland, Ohio. Yes, the goal is to do them in person, but what has happened since, you know, you look for every silver lining in the cloud. When we were doing in-person tastings, we might have 15, 20 people in the room. When we pivoted to the online tastings, that we've been doing now for the past year, we might get anywhere from 20 to 80 to sometimes 100 people online all tasting. 
And instead of us giving them the whiskey, they go out and buy the whiskey themselves. And that starts to work for everybody. Now, I don't think that can go on forever because once we're back in person, we'll we'll want that com- connection to the community. But what we have discovered is that there's actually an opportunity to reach more people now virtually. And we've maybe figured out a way to do that than ever before. I don't think that'll go away, but nor do I think in person will go away. So I think there'll be some balance in the future of the two of them. Um, I just think that's, that's, that's I, I think the, yeah, like the, in per- the downside of the in-person for a brand, from a brand perspective, like Sarah, when you talk about coming over to the U S and I've talked to brand global brand ambassadors from Ireland who've come over to the U S for a very expensive two weeks who've gone into a pub to talk to six people about whiskey. That's a very expensive thing to do. When could you reach 600 people by taking that money from the flight and putting it into Facebook ads and targeting an event and sending people whiskeys? So there's a lot of new kind of considerations, I think, that brands didn't have before. So I think it's going to be a bit bit of everything. Whenever you you take us and uh, we're all here in person, like live, this is us to like... You know, there's no like fabrication or, you know, this is who we are. And this is, I don't think this should go away. I, I genuinely don't think this should go away because it's very authentic and mm. it's something that we never tapped into. But I, I understand that you do need face to face. Face to face is very important. But for like, you should keep this going. Events like this, virtual events should still keep going. And, and as what Paul had said, is that, um, when it comes to Belfast Whiskey Week, even if we can be in person, you should still have a virtual event. You should still have people who cannot be there in person, maybe can't travel for yeah. whatever reason or can't afford to travel, can still be there in person. So, yeah, sorry, you know well, I'll let you talk no, about that. That's, that's great, there's yeah. A people, there's a lot of people actually who we've managed to connect with, and there's no doubt, Barry, you have done the exact same that we've been able to connect with who actually aren't like me and you. And we're not, they're not social animals. They're not like, I need to be with you. In fact, they're very recluse. And maybe they live alone. And maybe they don't go out much. Maybe they can't go out. Maybe they don't have transport. Maybe they don't have, you know, the, the money to do it. Maybe they don't yeah. have those, um, you know, they don't have that ability. And actually, what we've done here is, yes, we've managed to, you know, branch out. We've got lots of, lots of people, you know, connecting with us. That's okay. But actually, more importantly, we've got a lot of people who would never have connected in the first place, who would never have stepped out of comfort zones. And yet this has allowed them, this type of platform has allowed them to sit there, learn so much, get involved, become part of a community without yeah. doing that. And, I, and you know, uh, and there's a, there's a hidden community here. There's a hidden community, which is that people are... Who, who maybe didn't drink whiskey in the past or maybe weren't involved in, in whiskey at all. Maybe they've come on board. But secondary to that, it's about people who maybe didn't have a social life before, who maybe didn't engage with society. That's and true. actually are engaging. So there's an More engaging accessible. process yeah. there. Which yeah, that's fair. There's no doubt. I know people who, who have messaged me privately and have said, listen, I've never, I've never, you know, I've never gone to a pub. I've ne- you know, I've not, I can't do that. Yes, you know my my personality, my lifestyle doesn't allow me to do that. But coming yeah. on here, that's fair. To yeah. you, having a drink, it, you know, it's a different type yeah. of. It's a that's a great point. Of environment, great point. You know? Yeah, and there's there's it's not always one extreme or the other either because when it comes to the uh, Belfast whiskey tastings, um, this is just an example for me. I'm able to attend every single one because I'm at home, but. Right. It's not always the case, especially if like either you've got work the next day or you have kids. I have a little girl. I can't leave the house every single day. You know, it's it's just not feasible for me. So whenever you're at home and it, it gets to not even just half seven, whenever the, the tasting begins, but that tasting runs from half seven right through sometimes to like half 12, one o'clock at night. You can log in at any time of that night. You don't have to log in at half seven. So Making it virtual, not saying that that is the way to go all the time because face to face is is incredible, but having the option of having it virtual has been amazing. It's it's meant that I've been able to attend every single one of them. I never thought of that accessibility piece. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I like that. 
Well then, Sarah, there's no excuse for you not turning up to every lock-in and staying till three o'clock <laughs> in the morning. So if you've only just got to click on a link, like. Well, that's it. Although Barry, sometimes, like, honestly, I'm one of those people. I'm, I'm a, I'm a morning person. Like, not a morning person. That's a lie. I'm not a morning person. I'm a grouchy person who you cannot speak to until I have coffee in the morning. But maybe because I have Emily, I just get up early in the morning and go to bed slightly earlier at night. But maybe that's not always going to last forever. I was never like that. It used to be a night out. I used to not be able to get to sleep until maybe 3 a.m. and then get up at maybe... 10 at 10 a.m in the morning but now it's not it's, it's not the same so having it virtual is different and especially because everything's recorded you can go back and that's what i'm what i was trying to say to you is that a lot of the stuff i maybe don't listen to live but i listen to it at two o'clock in the day whenever i'm sitting in the office working on a project or working on a presentation and i have it in my um in my ears listening to it. that's where you get the most views too we get more views in the week after the lock-in than on the lock-in. So typically like it goes from, you'll have like a thousand or 2000 people over the course of a night here, but then it'll go up to six, seven, 8,000 over the course of the week as more people watch it and catch up. And which is interesting to watch. I can see how people consume it. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, a, it's actually quite incredible to see that even with the, with the lockdown and with the, the lock on travel, that the world has actually seemed smaller and I know. A genuine, maybe for me personally, the world seems smaller because I've been uh, interacting a lot over the, over the the course of my um, time with with McConnell's globally than I ever had done before, and that is genuinely down to the fact that you have time to tune into people. Like there's like if if it, if that wasn't the case, I'd be traveling or maybe out and about locally or or you know. You're only one person. You're going to be in one place at one time. But whenever you're online, you can be like, I'm probably now in different people's homes globally that I would never have been able to do before or never had the right, time yeah, to do yeah. before. 100%. 100%. And now you're going to be doing this every week. So you better get ready with your <laughs> songs and your, your poems and, and your rap. And your sister's coming in to sing a song like the Von Trapps, the whole lot of you coming I'll get, in. I'll get, I'll get them all on. You know, I'm the middle sister. <laughs> I'll get all my sisters on. We're all like just blonde, <laughs> the stand there going, singing our crew voices to, yeah. Barry, did, Here, you, um, did, you a, did you do a, a favourite, what was your, did you end up doing like a wee list of your favourite whiskies from last year? Did you ever do that? Did you ever come up with like a, your personal maybe one or two that you thought that hit the spot last year that's what it was i mean the one next year my yeah is, is yeah is, yeah is up there i did not a super formal list but redbreast 30 year old was up there um as was redbreast 27 which came out last year but then it was uh the causeway coast collection the um the the malaga which one was that the marsa which let me see we grab it the malaga is the 95 yes 95, yeah. Yeah, the 95. Yeah, the 95 one. This was one of my favorites of the year. Love it. That's nice. That's a good one, Nick. I haven't opened this one yet. Have you? Is that the... No. I don't... <laughs> no. How do you even have that? I have two of them. A two? I have two of them. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to show you. I was going to show you this. That, 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 that's the that's the Portuguese one. Oh, lovely, lovely. Portuguese one. But um, yeah, I mean, I've I've not been keeping up with them. I just got lucky online where I saw them going for sale one day, and I decided to buy them. Online. How the hell have you got two uh, UK edition um, bottles? There's 168 bottles total. 168 and you've got two of them well i was online and i, I didn't know anything because, about it be because he's, he's irish whiskey barry that's why no it's not that's why he has it i get nothing i trust me he now wears it, he wears a turtleneck and that's, Listen, that's hold on, why these bottles were not free you couldn't get these for free <laughs> you couldn't ask. no i paid full whack and i shipped one to america and i shipped one to ireland one to, to my home in, in ireland and wow. and um, i just ha happened to be online at the right time just by chance and i saw somebody posting about it and i decided to buy them but i haven't opened them I probably won't. 
I am I now you're making me very jealous. You've got a fucking thirty year old to pop into and then you've got your you know, your two freaking UK edition Bushmills Causeway collection bottles. It's quite fun oh. to see it, it's quite fun to see you like um angry, Paul, and you want it because usually you're all open your ball. Just just I want it to, you know I want, I want to open, spread I want it around and open it. So it's quite fun. So we, yeah, because I mean we have we have nine bottles opening for for this uh, tasting here in a couple of weeks for for Paddy's week, and that's that would be number ten. So if we had that bottle, we would open that. So my idea is that I will source that bottle, and I'll do it in the summertime. I'll 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 open that for the summer and let people taste it in the summertime because I've got lots of lovely wee single cast yeah, yeah. Bushmills offerings that you know have come you know to fruition. Oh, and also like there's. There's some new Bushmills coming. What about the 28 year old? Did you get that white box over there in, in Ireland? All that white 28 year old Bushmills. No, funny enough, Mary, I actually have two bottles of that picked up ah. from New York. I think I have one up there. Look, there's one up there. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, can I, I just say, you guys are just flexing here. These are flexing <laughs> muscles. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> How big is your 28-year-old? Yeah. <laughs> what have I got in my cover? Oh, he's got the 30-year-old. <laughs> Look at this. Boom. Paul I officially has the biggest whiskey bottle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, do you know what? There's just so much whiskey available. I just like, drink you know all mine, so uh, I'm only joking. That's not it's true. about the open bottles, though. It's about I only just started bottle. my journey, so. Although we do, we do have the Fred Cologne collection. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is good stuff. Can I just say, um, that, like, how would you say that? How would say you what? say the title of that name? Turconnell. 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 Uh -huh. Right. That's okay. Because how do you say it. Turconnell. Tur. No, I know. I, I get yeah, it. I get that that's what it says. Um, I can say, I give a shout out here? Um, can I interrupt this discussion about pronunciations to give a shout out um, to a charity event that we are going to be doing and doing for the next few months? Um, and thank you to John Doyle for the prompt. Um, we're going to be raising money for cancer research through Stories and Sips and our Irish Whiskey Fans of America Facebook group. I started last two weeks ago by putting up a couple of novelty t-shirts uh, for sale and many people bought them. 100% of the profits are going directly to cancer research. This morning, I signed up for a 100-mile bicycle ride in August um, in Ohio, where I um, have set a stretch goal to raise $10,000 for cancer research. And I'm going to raise 100% of that money from whiskey events and the whiskey community. So over the next few months and weeks, we're going to be doing lots of interesting things to raise money, where 100% of the proceeds are going to go to cancer research. So um, stay tuned. Lots of fun things coming. And I do private events between lock-ins for companies, and a portion of all the proceeds will go to this cause as well. So um, any support anybody wants to give, if you enjoy these lock-ins, I don't have details to share right now. I'll share them in the group during the week. Um, I'd love your support. Everyone is affected by cancer somehow. Uh, every family is touched by it. And so we're going to try and eliminate it uh, through our fundraising efforts. And uh, and we can only do that as a community. So stay tuned for more details on that. Love, uh, love the hashtag. And, and I clicked on the hashtag by accident a minute ago and it took me somewhere. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, Barry, Barry made me do it. I, I, I've got to get a t shirt that says that. Yeah, got to get Or a picture. Ah, no, he has a t-shirt because someone actually shared it with a bottle of McConnell. Is that a t-shirt? Yeah, there's a t-shirt. Yeah, we made two t-shirts. Can, can I get, where can I get one? Uh, if you go to the Facebook group and click on the announcements, you'll see the link to it. Or go to storiesandsips.com and our shop. They're for sale in the shop. And, and then uh, they come here to, to, to Belfast yeah. because... Like uh, we there's should... even things from the UK that don't even come to Belfast anymore. It was just a total nightmare. I, pretty sure because if they're ordered from europe they typically get printed in believe it or not latvia and they get shipped from latvia to ireland and the uk it should work it should work yeah yeah we'll start you out awesome. um, but anyway not to interrupt the, the fun Listen, with, that'll, uh, be, Barry, yeah. that'll be really good 100 miles on a bike yeah 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 
That's how all this yeah. whiskey thing started years ago. Was uh, like it started with a bike ride. Like that was the fundraiser I was talking about. Yeah. Where, yeah, I used to ride. Used to do this thing every year. Um, I haven't done it now for a few years. I've um, so now the first year I'm getting back to doing it. Uh, so August first weekend in August, I'll be going to Ohio and putting in the hundred miles. So between now and then. I'm hoping to track the journey and kind of the progress and then use that to raise money. You might even get a few whiskey brands, put their names on the jersey, you know, raise a bit of money. We'll see what we do. Ah, I love cool. a charity. <laughs> I, I genuinely mean that love a charity. I've done a lot for, for charity, walks, runs, marathons, oh, all those things. So. Listen, you can cycle for me, Barry. I'm not going to cycle. I'm not going to borrow my, my, my I'll car. put you on my you back. Cycle. You, you cycle. cycle. You I'm not. I'm not gonna. Wink, winking. He probably would cycle. If if you put your mind to it, Paul, you'd cycle anywhere. Oh, 100 percent. But here, that's it. I think it's great. It's, and I tell you what, if it's if it's the first weekend in August, obviously that's the back end of uh, the, the the whiskey festival. Surely, we don't. I don't have a charity partner yet for that. I haven't decided yet. But you know, happy enough to. To look at something. Uh, Alzheimer's Society, do the Alzheimer's Society because that that's a great. Well, yeah, I haven't. Great charity. Def definitely want to do something. Um, you know, there's 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 stuff to be done. But yeah, but I I think you've got such a big you know following here just now that they're all supportive. But everyone I'm seeing writing stuff about it, you know, here we raise some money. Here. Yeah, we'll we make, you'll make money. your target very quickly, Barry. Well, look, we we we'll, we'll 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 keep at it and we'll uh, we'll do what we can, and. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> I, hate, I, I much rather focus on the guests and the whiskey, to be honest. This is the, the Irishman in me is like, all right, now can we move on? Can we move on? <laughs> okay, let's talk about us. Let's talk about let's talk, us. Let's talk about the better looking people, Paul and Sarah. I was going to say Sarah, but I mean, it's clear. Listen. No, you've got a, you've got a wee bit of a, 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 a yeah, cone going on there. It's doing something. Oh. Doing something. It's got a lot, a lot, a, like a lockdown comb. Yes, yeah, that's the three here. Barry, three you can't, you can't get to the, a salon the or right a jester. Yeah. Barry, does, your, does your wife cut your hair? Do you think this looks like it's been uh, handled in any kind of professional way? No, this is like my hair just grows up like, like kind of Krusty the Clown. And so I have to use gel to like pare it down. Um, and I'm also thinning, so like I'm kind of going bald and growing like Krusty the Clown in, a, in an unusual twist. Yeah. And I've got loads of hair. I've got loads. It's just not good. He is right. boasting. He is flexing. Did I just say the flex is going on there? Paul with his 30 year old whiskey and his long hair. Look and his him. beard. The beard <laughs> and his 30 year old whiskey. It's like, show me your whiskey and I'll show you my hair. Oh my God. My beard my beard's nothing compared to some of these brand ambassadors. I, you know what? What the what? biggest thing about I brand ambassadors? Have you, ah, well, Joe, Joe, Mc, Joe, Mc, uh, Joe McGowan's beard. That's a beard. Big Dave uh, Cummins. That's uh, a beard. Beardy you know, Dave's beard. You know, I met uh, him for a coffee whenever you were allowed to meet for coffee, and um, yeah, that beard's impressive. It was like super, <laughs> super I... beards. A big shout out there quickly to John Doyle, who just purchased a T-shirt. Barry made me do it uh, on our charity website. Hey. Thank you so much, John. Uh, legend, you are yourself. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, all right, listen. It's 3.10 in the morning. Talking of cycling, you should be cycling off to bed, the two of you, because you have out outworked your, your yourselves. You have stayed longer than we expected. You've given more than we could have hoped for. And oh. we can ask for no more. Thank you very much, Barry. You can always ask for more, but cheers. Thank you. Listen, slange. Slange it to the two of you. You've been amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much. Slange That's almost the end of this battle now. The one thing <laughs> the one thing I want to finish on, first of all, is I want to just say thank you to the audience because I always... We love the audience. the audience. It's just great crack. And it's been great to, to, to read some of those comments. But thank you very much for that. And then, Barry, generally, thank you so much for, for inviting me on. I really appreciate that. I we'll do it again. Truly humble. No, I am Thank buzzing that you. you asked me on, and I honestly think that McConnell's not, not, I am a brand ambassador after all, right? But I, this is what introduced me to the Irish whiskey world before I was even a brand ambassador. Loved Irish whiskey before that, but not in the same way I do now that I'm part of this brand. So I'm so excited to be a part of it. I'm a bit of a fangirl. Whenever you asked me to come on, I was like, yeah, I actually like started to share stuff and I was like buzzing 
about being involved. And then whenever I heard Paul was coming on, I was like, I'm so relaxed because Paul knows me through and through. And yeah, he does. He had a great all um, night. It was brilliant. He's like, a, he's like a big brother. So brilliant. <laughs> Loved it all. Look, look at all the comments. Wow, three hours. Slaunch it. Thanks, everyone. Slaunch everyone. Thank you, Paul and Sarah. Amazing night. Thank you all so much. Sarah and wow. Paul are awesome. Love you both. Um, song. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Paul and Sarah. Jer Garland. Thank you, Barry, for a brilliant night. Thank you, Paul and Sarah. Uh, while you've all been talking, I've been busy negotiating with Jer Garland in the background, trying to get him on for a song. But let's just say that he is not suitably clothed for such an appearance. <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> let him do let him do a YouTube, just a him YouTube of him singing. I'd love to hear. We, we'll, we'll give Jura a pass tonight, but we'll rope him back in for a future release. Maybe something come out of Middleton gets released in the next few months that he'd want to come on and talk about, and he'll bring an old <laughs> tune with him. A tin whistle and a tune, maybe, he'll bring with him. <laughs> do you know, Barry, Barry, listen, honestly, and, and, and if I can just say this, because where we are based, based in Belfast, it doesn't always get the credence that, that, that it deserves. You know, we do, we talk a lot about the Southern distilleries, we talk a lot about Southern, um, you know, whiskey. And yet, what we're seeing, that renaissance we talked about earlier on, that kind of revival of all these different uh, brands, first of all, but lots of new distilleries coming on board. Um, you know, we're going to see the launch of a brand new whiskey specific this year at least from at least one distillery which has it's you know it's liquid now ready four four to five years old irish whiskey coming out of uh, the radaman estate um guys who mm -hmm. make short cross gin david yep. armstrong and and and, and he's and, he, and his wife something to watch out for something for you to keep on your radar uh, maybe you can connect me with them if you know them Sorry. maybe you can connect me we bring them on the support. i will listen i will do and i, I know that they're You'll see it through Bel Belfast Whiskey Week. You're going to see it then, but it's going to be released. And it is, and it's not just one whiskey. He has different types of whiskeys coming through. So there's single malts, uh, there's rye whiskey elements, there's pot stuff, different stuff, peated whiskey. So yeah, very interesting to see that, you know. And again, cha keep champion, keep doing what you're doing. We really appreciate we'll it. Thanks we'll for keep much doing for, it. For, for and look, here. as you meet interesting people along the way, send them my way. And I see a few people in the audience that we should have on next week. I'm looking at you, Jamie Cotter. I'm looking at Laura Barry. Why don't we have the two of you on next week? Uh, Jamie, I'll be in touch. Laura, I'll be in touch. Um, oh, Jamie's great. Jamie is great. And, and that's what, I, this is what I'm saying um, uh, for, no, for Northern Ireland. And, you know, I'm not saying that Ireland as a whole is incredible because it is like Ireland is doing so much, but Northern Ireland distilleries that are that are coming through is incredible, and especially in County Down at the minute. So, yeah, Jamie, big shout out to Jamie. He he's Off been down. messaging me while I've been on. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, will have to come on next week. I'll have to get some Hinch whiskies in, in in front of me for next week. And uh, Jamie, I'll give you a message. And then Laura Barry, who is uh, who I've gotten to know through this, uh, a great Cork woman who is a, an artist and a great fan of Irish whiskey, uh, who painted a wonderful painting of Dick Max Pub. Uh, the cool kitchen, the back kitchen, uh, which I have. Uh, I want to bring Laura on for a chat. She's a great whiskey, a whiskey woman as well. Uh, so we'll we'll talk about that and we'll announce that early on. And um, yeah, listen, that's it. We did it. We broke all records. I made it. I made it to the very. You 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 did beyond what was expected. You went beyond the three hours. <laughs> every time, every week, I come on here. Every week before I go live, I say to myself. I'll just do an hour, hour and a half tonight, just an hour and a half. And it never works that way because there's too much crack to be had. Like. That's it. There's too much to talk about. Too much crack. Too much we'll crack. See. Everyone's we'll loving we'll it. We'll sign just off. Go on away. Slaunch it, Ebo. Yep. Slaunch it. I have an empty glass. I have a full bottle or three quarters of a bottle. Here, <laughs> Paul, Paul, flex your chest. Show, show the McConnell's. No, it's glory. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Listen, you're Slauncha. legends. Slauncha. Slauncha, both of you. Thanks a million for your support. We'll talk to you later. I'll let you go. Good night. God bless you. Cheers, Sarah. Cheers, Paul. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, three hours in. The time flies. I don't know how we do it. 
I don't know how we do it. Uh, Paul gave us a song. Does that count as the song tonight? No, I think it does. Surely that counts as the song tonight. Surely it does. <laughs> yes, Joe Garland is still up uh, because I've been messaging him here in the background and uh, there's no chance we're getting Joe on tonight, but we'll get Joe on another night. Uh, Joe, standing invitation always to join us. Just let us know. Uh, this was a great session. Uh, I love the fantastic people we meet through the whiskey world, the whiskey community in Ireland. And uh, some of these people like Sarah, I've never met in person. I've met Paul in person. But uh, many of the people that we have here have only been met over the past year. Uh, online through the pandemic, which is remarkable that we get to spend a uh, great time together and have the crack. Uh, and we'll do the same next week and we'll do the same the week after that. Thank you all for uh, your support over the past 10 minutes of those uh, t-shirts, those fundraising t-shirts as well. Thank you to Stacy, Tony, thank you very much for those purchases. Amazing, uh, much appreciated. And we will uh, give a status update on the fundraising during the week and uh, some more details of some things to come and how you can uh, support uh, as well and how I'll continue to support and uh, try and raise, what's that? Bit of dust. Uh, raise money for cancer research as well. Uh, Dave O'Connell joining us there from Dublin <laughs> saying a three hour lock in. Yeah, that's becoming the standard now at this stage. Uh, it, it's never the intention. It's never the intention. Um, before we go, before we wrap up tonight, I want to come back to the thing I started off the night talking about, which uh, you're going to hear a lot more about, which is Waterford Whiskey and Waterford Distillery. Uh, next week, we'll drink some Waterford Whiskey together on the show, and um, and we will do an event. We'll do a show with the team from Waterford over the coming weeks or a couple of months as well. Maybe we'll bring in Mark Rainier, the founder of Waterford Distillery, to talk to us um, as well. But... The podcast series that I've I've produced in association with Waterford Distillery, I can't talk enough about it, not because I'm involved, because it is so interesting uh, learning from scientists and growers, farmers, farmers' families, agronomists, whiskey drinkers, distillers, about what it takes to preserve the flavor of the land where barley comes from. It's absolutely fascinating to me. It's something I'm just, I could end, I could sit and listen endlessly to the people who are involved in this project. Uh, and so I'll be sharing a lot more details over the next eight weeks of our eight episode, eight week podcast series. And the Stories and Sips podcast is on a hiatus at the moment while we make way for this Waterford Whiskey podcast, which will be hosted by Waterford Whiskey on their website. But I could envisage over the coming months that the, the Stories and Sips podcast will be more, um, infrequent in the sense of we will produce series that are released maybe there are three or four podcast uh, three or four episode podcasts or six episode series related to a specific topic because i think that's really interesting where we could go deep perhaps documentary style and then we'll use the lock-in to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people when i started the lock-in i was doing a podcast almost weekly there isn't the time in the day to be doing a podcast every week a lock-in every week try to make a living and pay the bills it just doesn't work so we'll keep the lock-in going the podcast will be less frequent but i think that's a fair enough trade-off hopefully a fair enough uh, trade-off uh let me see um doo -doo -doo -doo. maureen asked if i catch if i caught ned live on instagram this morning i didn't we've had ned on in the past we'll try and have ned on again in the future but uh, yeah, this water, this terroir driven, the Waterford Whiskey podcast, it's on iTunes, it's on Spotify right now. You can go and subscribe. The teaser episode is there, which is a four minute introduction to what this series is gonna be about. Next week, Tuesday, we'll be dropping our first episode, which is an interview and a chat with Mark Rainier about the origin story of the Waterford distillery, what led him to his beliefs about terroir and why he decided to raise a lot of money and invest heavily in building a distillery built built entirely around this uh, concept of terroir. Fascinating to me. I felt so privileged to sit in uh, these get just sit with these guests remotely and virtually and listen to their stories. Just such a privilege. So we've tied it all together in a kind of a documentary style uh, to bring to bring you just some objective perspectives. And uh, I'll keep mentioning it. I'm keen to share that Waterford Distillery offered me complete editorial control of the podcast uh, because I wanted to get objective viewpoints on terroir because it's a divisive subject and it's a controversial topic and some people dispute and disagree. So I wanted to ask scientists and distillers from around the world, as well as those within the distillery, their thoughts so that we can make up our own mind. Not does terroir exist because the scientific proof is there as of this week, 
but rather does it matter? Does what Waterford Whiskey and Waterford Distillery are doing, does that matter to us as whiskey drinkers? That's the only question this podcast sets out to ask. Ask and then for you to answer. As simple as that. I did chat with Rob Arnold. Yes, John Doyle asks. Rob Arnold is the master distiller uh, with um, in Fort Worth in Texas. He is the man responsible for TX Whiskey, TX Bourbon. Uh, spoke extensively with Rob Arnold, and uh, Rob will be featured in at least three of our episodes over the eight-episode series. So stay tuned uh, to that. Let me see. Tony says, please put up the podcast again. Uh, The podcast... So it's called Terroir Driven. Let me see if I can show you what this looks like on Apple Podcasts. I'll show you a picture of it here. Okay, so this is what it looks like on iTunes, our Apple podcast, Terroir Driven, the Waterford Whiskey podcast. And uh, our teaser episode already has a five-star rating, which is great to see. Uh, So our next episode will drop on Tuesday. So uh, go check that out. Go check that out. Uh, Really interesting stuff, and I'm fascinated by it, and you'll be uh, hearing a lot more about it. I'll be like a broken record about this, a broken record. Shin A, as they say in Ireland, in the Irish language. That's it. Shin A. It is uh, three and a half hours in. Three and a half hours in to our podcast. Our podcast. God knows what we're doing at the moment. Is it lock-in? What is it? Where are we? Are these my feet? We're at the end of a lock-in. And uh, what a great night. Privileged to have Paul and Sarah join us. And uh, hopefully they come back again. And they added such great value. And we're just so fortunate and uh, privileged to have them. And such nice people and interesting people in the world of the whiskey, world of Irish whiskey, who are willing to to join us and chat and uh, have the crack. It's been great fun. So that's it. I'm not going to sing at the top of my lungs tonight. Uh, The reason is that uh, Mrs. Stories and Sips is uh, very uh, patiently sitting in the corner watching a a movie. And I won't disturb her. And she's kindly given given me three and a half hours of half of our apartment. So we will leave it at that. Uh, I'll see you in the Facebook group during the week. And we'll be back here again next week with some great guests, great whiskeys, and hopefully uh, another great night of stories, sips, and an old song or two. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you later. Sláinte.